now. Okay. It's me, Mario. It's me, Mario. Hello. It's -a me, Luigi. Hey everybody, it's me, Samuel Kim, Mario Maniac. I'm joined today by my friend Mallory, who is the Luigi Lunatic. Oh, it's me! Oh, Crazy I can, about him. I can share sound with you now, too. <gasps> what? Yeah, can you hear it? Yeah! It's incredible. Whoa! <laughs> Humongous strides were taken. I feel like I vaguely remember this. Although I feel like the last time I Let's Played with you was like six months ago it or was something. was a very long time ago. We didn't even have... Okay, last time I streamed... Or last time I was on a Let's Play, we didn't have the bed I currently have. <laughs> wow! Hi, Tyler! Oh yeah, I gotta have the chat open so I can see it. Hey, Tyler. I think I, I'm gonna try to beat it today. Ooh. I always thought that this game was super long. It is super... kinda long. It's kinda long, but like, I guess I always thought it was like many, many hours. But that's just because I'm really terrible at video games and only played this at friends' houses. Also, like, watching me play it, I have played this game so many times, like, over so many years. Like, I know where all the secrets are and I know where everything is. Mm-hmm. And so, like, it's not a very long game, like, for me specifically. Like, <laughs> Right. But I've also seen, like, other Let's Plays of it. And even though they might take twice as long as you, it's still shorter than I thought it was. Yeah, that's fair. It's, um... It's, it's a really good game. You know, I've never actually, like, other than a couple times at Friends Houses, never played it. Really? Yeah. I've never played it seriously. I've never played it where it's like, all right, I'm actually going to try and beat levels. Oh, like I'm going to go, like, get some stars and shit. <laughs> yeah, I've always just sort of, like, farted around in whatever level was nearby. That, guy, that thing sucks. Yeah, that thing's bad. Look, I made it, though, and, and here's the star. What do you know? I didn't know he had little X's on his eyes when he gets hit. That's so cute. Yeah, he does. I'm uh, I'm really close to beating um, Mario Galaxy 2 as well. I've been playing that. That's a game that I want to play. Like we, I think we have it on um, Virtual Console. We just haven't really played it. Um, Mario Galaxy both one and two are fucking great. Would you? Which one would you recommend to start with? One? Um, yeah, I would say, like, the thing is, there's basically nothing different between the two of them. There's, like, different levels and everything, obviously. Mm-hmm. But, um, like, mechanics-wise and, like, er like level design-wise, they're basically functionally the same. Gotcha. It's, like... A very true to the word sequel, like same kind of stuff. Like uh, Mario Galaxy Two could have been like DLC. Like, I gotcha. It's it's it, there's nothing different. I think even like it's the same graphics, the same model for Mario, everything. <laughs> like nice. Same controls. I think, I think we played. I'm pretty sure we played one. I really can't remember now. I'm I'm fairly certain we own them both though. Uh, one's, like, the best game for the Wii, um, if you ask me. Uh, mm. Two is probably also the best game. Like, there's functionally no difference in quality either. <laughs> do you sort of, like, um, do you sort of lump them together most of the time? In my head, yes. Yeah, I've never played two until recently. Uh-huh. And, um, yeah, but, like... In my head, I, I would think while I was playing too. Have I played this part before? And just it was a, a similar level in one. Gotcha. So I think that like a few years down the road, I'm not going to be able to tell you which one was which. <laughs> nice. Remember was how it I more... said I know where everything is in this game? Yeah, and I've been watching you jump around for a minute. <laughs> I kind of forgot where this one is. It's one of two places. And I was trying to look, but the camera wasn't really cooperating. Believe I mean, the camera wasn't cooperating in Mario 64. Believe it or not. 
This game has a really awful camera. Oh shit, that was legit just an accident. Whoops. Lydia just asked, is Bowser gay? Um, I told- I said he's pan. Yeah, he'd about have to be. I think that he's at least bi, because I think- I've discussed already on these streams, I don't know if you've watched any of it. I've watched some, yeah. Um, I did discuss your theory about, uh, I did! I heard that bit! Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I talked about that, and I think that Bowser and Mario are kind of... Like, it's- I don't think that they ever really interact in the relationship, aside from the hero and villain dynamic. Right. But I think that there is a romantic connection there, in some... I think it's platonic romance, right? Aren't those opposites? No, no, you can have a platonic romance. Platonic just means you're not fucking. Mm, I think that's fair. I think they have genuine, like, good feelings toward each other. I think the villain hero shit's like a role play. Yeah, I, I think it's a little true. Like, they were, like... Like... It's a little... Like, they're kind of friendly rivals, maybe. Like, yeah, like a gentle ribbing, kind of like, you talk shit to your friends. Right, like, occasionally I kidnap your girlfriend, you wiener, kind of thing, and then Mario's like, Oh, I'll get you, you big lizard! Yeah, but what you didn't see was, like, the whole text chat of between Mario and Bowser, how they were planning it together. Right, they were saying, like, hey, how about this time, when I kidnap her, we're gonna go to a tropical island on Isle Delfino. And... <laughs> That was the whole thing there. I think yeah, it's here. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it is. Okay, good. Nice. Lydia says, why is that the meaning of the word platonic? I'd be so mad if I was Play-Doh. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Play-Doh. My legacy was like the guy who didn't fuck. <laughs> I'm pretty sure... Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the whole phrase is platonic romance. Like, when you say you have a platonic relationship with somebody... It is a romantic relationship, but in that you were more than friends, but not lovers. Is, I think, exactly what that philosophy is. I think that's fair. I don't think that Plato said, like, I don't fuck. He was saying that I love people that I'm not romantically involved with. Yeah, but nobody looks into it that hard. So, like, if you consider Plato, like, just as a surface thing, like, it's like, oh, Plato, that's where Platonic comes from. He must have not gotten laid ever. Right? <laughs> and so he invented a word for himself. Poor Plato. Yeah. I get it, though. Especially since I read a little a bit of Plato, he had a bunch to say on, like, friendships and shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tyler says, I fuck, therefore I am. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that for sure there's a little something between Mario and Bowser. I think that's fair. Uh, otherwise, I don't think that they would be in a polyamorous relationship with Peach. Right, of like course. It, you it, have to you have to be like more slightly more than friendly with each other to have that con kind of conversation. Right. I, I love the, uh, the idea of just anybody who doesn't really know us or has never seen any of our videos before casually stumbling into one of these, like, oh, somebody's streaming Mario 64. And it's just <laughs> us just, like, babbling about <laughs> the, the platonic romance between Mario and Bowser. <laughs> With absolutely no background. It's, hey, you need to get, just go on YouTube, go to Samuel K. Is it 2,000 or 3,000? 5,000. Oh, shit. Uh, Samuel K. 5,000 on YouTube. They're, like... I think it's episode two of the newest Mario 64 you talk about it. A lot. Yeah. I, we've talked about it in other things before, too, I, I feel we've like. We've talked about it in other shit, but it's almost never a Mario game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to remember where all these secrets of the sky and everything are, too. I don't know this level very well. I know this is Eric's favorite level, and he's not it even seems here. fucking tedious. It is a little tedious. I know there's one behind here. See? You did it. So are these the red coins? No, these are the secrets. Oh. Like, you just get them arbitrarily for doing shit in the level. For doing shit on accident? Right. Uh, so I found two of them. There should be five. There's one for do pushing you, in this block. Do you get a star for getting all five, then? Yes, and then a star will appear somewhere in the level, and I get to go get it. Once I've discovered all five. And I think- Oh, they have little pictures of Bowser on them! Yes! <laughs> Bowser made this! 
These guys only show up in two levels, and they're awesome here because they help you get around the level and like. Oh look, he's good. It says Koopa, and he's doing a little thumbs up. Aww. I like it. Are they annoying in all the other levels? Oh, like, there's no way. They're horrid in, in uh, TikTok Clock. Because they will do that and then just throw you to your death. Oh, well, fuck. Like, they'll throw you into a bottomless pit and then you die. Gotcha. But here oh, they I help didn't... you get around. I didn't know coins were life in this game. Yeah, they are. Uh, and I think the fifth one is over behind this block, or it's in that one. Let's see. Oh no, I was wrong. Ooh shit, Mallory, we might be in trouble here. Do you not know where it is? Uh, I can find it. This I, this I know. This I swear. Remember that song? Uh, no. I believe it was called This I Swear, and it was by, like, NSYNC or the Backstreet Boys or something. Oh, I do vaguely remember that. It wasn't and one that of their is definite, huge it's, hits. It's a Backstreet Boys song. It was Backstreet Boys? Okay. Yeah, because I don't know enough NSYNC songs to know their B-sides. <laughs> oh, God! Were you a BSB fan? I was. Was there, like, okay... Was I remember, um, there, that was the last one. Um, I remember there was a big thing when I was in middle school that was like Backstreet Boys versus Corn. What? Can you remember that all at all? No, that was not anything that I remember. Um, the reason being is that Backstreet Boys were, um, on TRL, right? Right, right. And, uh... Nice job. Thanks. Uh, I've got to figure out how to get up there and get that star. <laughs> Did uh, you log on to the BSB BBS? <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh no, I survived that. Okay, good. I may not survive getting thrown up here, though. We're gonna try it. Get me up there. Okay. As long as I live and land on that thing, I'm okay. Okay, we're in good shape. Um, but, uh, Backstreet Boys kept bumping corn out of the top video on TRL. Oh. And so, like, I was a young corn fan, obviously. Right. And, um,. Then I learned what real heavy metal is and became a normal human being. Right, because <laughs> that's not, that's not actual heavy metal. But yeah, there was this big thing where like, they were pitting corn against the Backstreet Boys. That's so weird. Wow, TRL. That's a show that doesn't happen now. Yes, it does. They brought it back. <sighs> does it work? No. I was gonna say, like, TRL was huge, because that was the way you got your new music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they brought TRL back, um, like, this year? Mm-hmm. Is it still Carson Daly? No, it's some other guy that doesn't have nearly the charm that Carson Daly had. Yeah, I vaguely remember Carson Daly being okay. I made a mistake. I need to do something else instead of doing what I did. So can I give you some interesting strategy in this game? Yes. Um, I'll show you. I'll demonstrate. So, Wet Dry World, the whole gimmick is changing where the water levels are. Yeah. Uh, where you jump into the painting determines where it starts. Oh. So if you jump up really high, the water level will be high. If you jump at the bottom, it'll be really low. Interesting. See, it's almost all the way up at the top. Yeah. How would you ever fucking know that as a kid? I don't know, but I figured it out. <laughs> it's really interesting to me. Oh, also the new uh, TRL. I've seen one clip of the new TRL, and that guy from Twitter, uh, the Fat Jew, was being interviewed on there. Who? The Fat Jew. I don't know who this is. Uh, this is not me being mean and calling somebody a fat right, Jew. Right, that's this his screen name, by. I assume. 
Yeah. Um, his whole shtick is he goes on Twitter and tells jokes and things, and he's written several books. He is a controversial figure because he is very frequently accused of stealing jokes from people. Ah, uh, look how shocked I am. Uh-huh. Because that's what everybody... Uh, that's what everybody on Twitter fucking does. Steals jokes. I mean... It, it's bothersome if somebody is paid by their tweets. Like, if their job is to tweet for a company. I don't like that, obviously. Yeah, but if somebody steals a joke from a comedian who makes money off of their jokes... What does it matter, really? Well, but... Then everybody's heard that joke from somebody else, so oh, then right. that so then the comedian looks weird. Like if he says that joke later in like a stand-up show, you have a point. Please don't I mean, steal it's, jokes. Just don't steal jokes. I feel like that's kind of it's not it's not as akin because I know that like words are different than art, but like I feel like that's art theft. Oh yeah, like, for that, sure. That's somebody's art. Like they're making comedy. Like. Don't steal that shit. Don't steal people's creativity. Just go ahead and steal art, though. It doesn't matter. Yeah, fuck it. Who cares? You can steal art all that you want to, because, like, artists don't really work. They just draw. It's easy. <laughs> Have you seen that Four Exposure blog? Yes! I fucking love that blog. It's so funny. People are like, it took you five minutes. Why do I have to pay for it? It'll only take a second. It's like, you're not paying for my time, dildo. Right, if it's so easy, you do it. Like, yeah, you do it yourself then. Save me the five minutes. No, I'm with you on that completely. But like, pe people do like legit say that shit. No, no, like, yeah, that, like it's so ridiculous. Like you, like when it comes out of your mouth, it's just like, wow, that's the most insane thing. And you're like, wait, no, people actually say that dumb shit. It drives me fucking crazy. The um. Like, it's the classic thing that artists bitch about, but it's people saying, Oh, I wish I could draw. You can. Yeah. I I've just spent years and years and years learning how to do it. Like. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, you can draw. You just have to practice. You didn't You didn't spend any time doing it. I did. Like, I didn't pop out of the right. room with a pencil in my hand and said, Give me some paper. Did you think I popped out of the putsy drawing like Mozart? You can't <laughs> Which is a joke I, jo I just... That's a joke I just stole. What, who's it from? Uh, Game Grumps. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but I credited. I credited. You can't tell me I didn't. You didn't. Oh, shit. I just told you, <laughs> didn't I? Oh, no! Oh, fiddlesticks. Oh, well. Ah, oh, nice save. I had to go unlock the cannon so that it, if I do miss this one, I can just warp back up. Ah. Uh. I'm gonna show one of my favorite tricks in this level here, too. Don't let me forget, okay? Okay. It's a useless trick, but I think it's the only place in the game where you can do it. Uh oh. That's rude, Tyler. That's persecution. A new firm. He says in, Mal in Mallory's case, it's Motespark. Motespark. I like that. <laughs> I think that's okay. L Lydia, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> it's already a thing! Oh, Beethoven! Shit! It is Beethoven. <laughs> You're very correct. I used to love that movie. I always hated the part where um, he puts all the blood on Beethoven's face with yeah, the syringe. Yeah, he like slaps him. Doesn't he, or does he squirt him? He squirts him with the blood, I think, but then rubs it around, maybe? Oh, he rubs it around. I don't like that. Don't touch that dog. I did it. <laughs> nice. Look, I'm a little baby. Hee hee. Ha ha. <laughs> baby Ouija. Here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> um, I, I didn't understand and still don't remember as a kid why that guy wanted to kill Beethoven. Oh, wait. What's the trick? Oh, yeah. I'll show you. Uh, I don't know. Oh, didn't he want to, like... Put him in an incinerator or something? Yeah, but why? I don't know. Dog bone blood? I don't know. Dog bone goo? He needed some- he needed dog's blood. 
It's like it's like how horses are made into glue. You need to make dog glue. <laughs> <laughs> Let me figure out what was going on in that movie. Yeah, look up the Wikipedia entry for Beethoven and just read the plot synopsis. Oh, I forgot Beethoven's a real person. I have to put movie in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's my cool trick. Are you ready? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, I'm on a different... Ah! Yes, go. Okay. So if you point directly at the sun, I think... Ah, rude! Oh, wait, no, I did it wrong. I did it wrong. Don't worry, this will this will get us to the same place, though. Maybe it's point directly at the sun and then up as high as you can go. Okay, so that fall took away half of my health, right? Yeah. So if I point directly at the sun and then up higher... Yeah, there we go. Mario's uh, dead body falls back into the cannon. Oh god. And then... You just... Fire Mario's corpse out of the cannon, and he That's dies horrifying. instantly. <laughs> it's awful. Yeah, it's a good trick. Okay, puppies are stolen from a pet store by two thieves for some reason. Yes. The Saint Bernard escapes and sneaks into the people's house. The people name him Beethoven. Beethoven helps the children overcome their problems. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. You take Be Beethoven to the vet. They are unaware that he is involved in an uneth unethical and deadly animal experimentation and hired the two thieves. Mm -hmm. He talks to George and tells him of a supposed mental instability among St. Bernard's making them dangerous to humans. Oh. He requires large skulled dogs such as St. Bernard's for an ammunition test. Holy shit! So, um, so this guy is just testing bullets against dog skulls. I guess. Jesus. He visits the home under the guise of doing a follow-up exam on the dog, which is fucking weird. They don't do house calls. <laughs> Uh, he says he's gonna he says he's gonna press charges unless the dog is euthanized. So he's like, oh yeah, hey, by the way, you have to kill your dog for no reason whatsoever. I'm trying to read ahead because some of this is kind of boring. Like the guy, the guy like feels bad. He comes back with the empty leash, and the family's pissed off at him. Um, the dad goes back to the doctor's office. The doctor says Beethoven has already been put down. But the dad notices that the doctor doesn't have any bite marks on his arm. And he punches him. The family follows the fucking doctor to a warehouse. They don't call the cops. Yeah, uh, ooh, that's odd. Yeah, they should call the cops. I would call the police and say, hey, some weirdo just stole our dog and shot him in the head with ammunition. Right. Oh, uh, the guy is about to shoot the dog. This is really weird, because, like, Beethoven breaks out while they call the cops. The dad crashes through a skylight as the vet prepares to shoot the dog. Like, while all this insanity is going on, you're just going to do this? Right? What kind of ammunition test would you need a live dog for that you couldn't use ballistic gel for? Or, yeah, like, you couldn't, like, make a similar approximation out of, like, a dead pig skull, right? Right. Why would you have to use a live animal? Like, you can go to a butcher's office and... J or a butcher's office? <laughs> so professional. You can go to a butcher and just say, hey, I need, like, two dozen pig skulls. And he'll and go... Pig wouldn't a pig skull be better? Yeah, exactly. And you say, I need two dozen pig skulls. Um, thank you and good night. Like, that's... Yeah, I need two and, dozen then, and then the butcher says to you, okay, pig skulls are $1.99 a pound or whatever. And you go, all right, here's 50 bucks. And the, <laughs> thank you. 
Like, yeah. <laughs> that's all that goes into that interaction. It's really weird, too, because then that's legal, first of all. And then second of all, like, you have a better approximation to a person's head. Also, it's not going to move around. Yeah, it's not. Like, you can... It's a corpse. Uh, Beethoven probably... Tyler pro uh, Beethoven probably is uh, Charles Grodin's best movie. He's what? It's, Char it's Charles Grodin's best film. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, he or wait, wait, wait. Was Charles Grodin also the dad in Clifford? Uh, let me check. I don't think so. Because if he was the dad in Clifford, then Clifford is his best film. He was the okay Clifford, and then Beethoven. I would say. No, oh, he was in Clifford. Okay. Who doesn't love Clifford? Uh, I saw Clifford in the theaters when I was a kid. We should do a movie night and watch Clifford together someday, all of us. Oh my god. I watched Beethoven so many goddamn times, and I love how I still had to wiki the fucking plot to the movie, because I still don't remember it. I've never seen it as an adult. I've only ever seen it when I was a little kid. Yeah, I only saw it as a kid. I don't think I've seen it as an adult. But I remember some of the lines, like, so vividly. I remember, um, watching it with my little cousin, and there was, like, a mean lady who said, um, oh, then The Great Muppet Caper is Charles Grodin's best movie. I forgot he was in that, too. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, but, um, I remember uh, a line from Beethoven where the woman says, I just love big, dumb animals. Yeah. And my cousin said, why would, if she likes the animals, why does she call them dumb? And I had to explain, like, some things are dumb even if you like them. Like, dogs aren't very smart in general. Yeah, because they're fucking dogs. But it's that it's that weird lady, the lady that makes me think of um, shoot, what's her name? Oh my god, Guerrero. Uh, Eddie Guerrero. The rest. No, of... no, his sister. What's her name? Lucille <laughs> Guerrero. She would just like scream, "Excuse me!" I... <laughs> Fucking hell! About. I have no clue. Vicky Guerrero. Vicky Guerrero oh, Vicky was Gu like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like she she did the wrestling thing, but she wasn't a wrestler. She was like a manager, and she'd just be like her her character was like just a really bitchy lady. <laughs> That's all you had to do was be bitchy lady as a She was real good at it though cuz she had like kind of a weird face. <laughs> so she was like very very good at it. But um she always reminded me Vicky Guerrero as I saw her as an adult always reminded me of that mean lady from Beethoven. Oh. I'm I'm picturing the uh mean lady is Frau Farbissima from Austin Powers for some reason. Oh, like an older lady? Yeah, that's all, that's how I picture, but that's like just my memory is wrong. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the um the lady in Beethoven was kind of young, wasn't she? I, I don't remember genuinely. Let me look her. Let me look her up. Mean remember, lady in Beethoven. I remember in um here's what I remember about Beethoven is the scene where he's like all covered in mud and then he like stands on the bed and shakes off and. The whole house is covered in mud then. Like, yeah. I remember that scene. I remember him spraying the blood on v Beethoven's face with a syringe. Because for some reason in my head, I thought he was cutting him with the needle. And that made oh. the scene a lot scarier for me as a kid, because I thought he was cutting his face. Yeah, that would be scary. Or scratching him. Yeah, or something. Not like squirting fake blood on him. Right. And I'm, like, I don't know why they used a scary thing like a syringe to do it. <laughs> yeah, that is kind of weird. Like, why would he even have that? Why wouldn't he just get, like, a bottle? Just a... It's like an old Sobe bottle. Full of, <laughs> full of blood, because it was the 90s. There was a sequel to 60 Minutes called 60 Minutes 2, and Charles Grodin was a correspondent. What? What? And also, Lydia, I'm not sure if it was his own blood that he just took out with the syringe, or... I'm not sure the origin of the blood. No, it was just, like, in his pocket. Like... 
That would be very weird if it was his own blood that he just squirted all over the place. I mean, I get it, because then it would look like... Like if they decided to DNA test it or something. Yeah, but I why guess. the fuck would they do that? I'm not sure exactly. Uh, was my dog Skip the movie where the dog dies? Every fucking dog movie is where the dog dies. Okay. Old Yeller dies. I'm pretty sure Skip dies. Uh, when I was a kid, I didn't understand that Old Yeller had rabies and had to be put down, and I thought they just had to kill the dog. Oh, just because. <laughs> just like, okay, we're done with this dog now, let's put a bullet in his brain. <laughs> No more dog for you. I was like, what are you killing him for? Jesus. Can rabies be cured in dogs now? It's a vaccine. Oh, if okay. Get, if you get rabies and you start showing symptoms, the likelihood that you're going to be able to get treated for it's pretty low. Like a human but, being? Yeah, but you can catch it pretty early. Like, if you get bitten by an animal and you get a rabies shot within, like, I think it's like a couple years, as long as your symptoms aren't showing, you can cure it. No shit? Like, it takes that long to show up? I think so. Let me see. I thought you get, like, rabies and then, like, a few days later, like... I think it can, it can lay dormant. Rabies is a virus, right? Yeah. Like, it's not like a vampire, where, like, if you get bitten, like, a few days later, you start to turn. <laughs> like... <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Incubation periods as short as four days and longer than six years. Jesus! Yeah, so you can hold on to it. That's why, like, if you go to the hospital for anything, like, they typically ask you if you've been in contact with, like... Have you been in any contact with, uh, an, you know, a rabbit animal, or may you have been bitten, re like, in within the last five years or something? They'll say, like if, "Hello, has a dog bit you on your ear?" I mean, not for everything, but I mean, like, if you go, like, if a dog bites you, like, obviously they're gonna give you the rabies vaccine, but like, then, like, after, like, if you get bitten by a dog, they're like, "Have you been in contact with anything else that has bitten you recently?" Like, it's just like increasing your possibility of showing signs of rabies. Oh, hey Shane. Hello. Shane is here now in the chat. Um so if a bat bites me, I'm good for a few days. I mean, you're at least good for like a day or two. Uh well, so let's say I'm really busy that week. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What if I'm in vacation in the Bahamas? It says, it says as short as four days, so I think you've got up to four days. I'm on a two-week vacation in the Bahamas, and I don't want it to ruin my vacation. To be fair, it's hard to know if it's rabies or not. I mean, other than the fact that you got bit by a bat. But well, like, if you get a phone call from the bat a couple of days later, and he's like, "Hey, I don't want to freak you out or anything, but remember when I beat you on the, bit you on the ear?" Uh, I just got tested, and it turns out I have rabies. Now, don't don't be scared. There's only a chance that that I that I communicated it to you. For fuck's sake. Yeah. Ooh. Here we go. Um, but God, excuse your phone call and his tiny bat phone. <laughs> um, rabies is weird because in the early stages, it's like mental symptoms, like. Like, you get really aggressive. What if you're like... Okay, so... Okay, here's my question about that, then. You get really aggressive. What if you're like a pro wrestler or something that gets bitten by a bat... And everybody's... And you're a heel? Nobody'd know for years! Well, I mean... And then he's running around in the ring biting other people? Because that's you what... Would start, you would start being terrified of water. I imagine you wouldn't last very long. Oh, holy shit. Do you remember back in the old days of WCW where Goldberg would come out and take a drink of water and then spit it all over the place? Oh no! Goldberg had rabies?! <gasps> Scary. That's horrible. You, still, you think he still has rabies? He probably still does. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Bill Goldberg gave me rabies is gonna be the title of my autobiography about how I got bitten by Bill Goldberg when I was a kid. <laughs> and then, like, Goldberg will have to come out and he'll have to say, I never bit that child! I did not have bite child with that child. <laughs> I was trying to... Like a Bill Clinton. Yeah, that was... I, it didn't work. I also, like... What if... What if... <laughs> what if we... Okay, this is a topical joke, right? So what if we lived okay. in, like, a... Like a BoJack Horseman-style world where, like, TV stars were animals and things? And instead of saying that, like... Harvey Weinstein was beating for or was you know making sexual advances on fourteen-year-old boys. He was biting them. Just hiding? Or wait, no, Kevin Kevin Spacey was the one I'm. Thinking. Oh, is he was like biting? I can't hear you too well over the um. Should I turn it down? Yeah. But no, no, Kevin Spacey was biting fourteen-year-old boys. <laughs> Don't <laughs> it's bite. The, it's the same kind of scandal. Like oh. Kevin Spacey bites children, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? He's mean. Rude. And then we'll, we'll have to cancel his Netflix show, House of Barks. Oh no! <laughs> Man, Kevin Spacey and Harvey Weinstein both got in a whole lot of trouble recently. Well, maybe they shouldn't have been terrible. Maybe they shouldn't have done horrible things. Yep. But Maybe like, consider that. They should, should have bit all those kids. They shouldn't have bit them all. They're just biting people. This is a bullshit move on the part of the game. To dump you out. Like, can you imagine, like, remember when they got that picture of, like, David Hasselhoff laying on the ground eating cheeseburgers? Yeah. he was all drunk? Like, imagine if he was a dog and they caught him, like, rubbing his ass on the carpet. <laughs> And, like, instead of, instead of, like, going to rehab, like, they have to go to the vet and get wormed for a week. And, like, <laughs> it's like, oh, no, he's got worms. You put a fucking uh, cone of shame on him. Yes. <laughs> um, have you ever had a dog that had worms? Uh, no, but I knew, um, a dog that had worms. We like, a... I, I was at somebody else's house and their dog had worms. We got a, we got a dog that had worms when I was a kid, and we were worming the dog. And just, like, it became part of our life to, like, go out into the backyard, and then there'd be, like, a dog shit laying on the back porch. And yeah. there'd just be live worms squirming around in it. It's really gross. And, like... I've always had a really sensitive gag reflex. Like, I can think about gagging and gag myself. No uh -huh. joke. And, like, the only time that, like, cleaning dog shit is worse than, you know, the actual act of cleaning dog shit is if it's dog shit full of actual worms. Yeah, that's like, fucking gross. It was horrible. Where is all these stars and all these coins? I forget where all the red coins are in this level, too. I'm very sorry, everybody. Tyler says, what about dog shit full of gummy worms? I don't know if that's grosser, but it's definitely sadder because I really like gummy worms and I don't want them to be ruined. Yeah, I don't know if that- I mean, it's, it makes gummy worms grosser, that's for sure. Yeah, it ruins the gummy worms and makes those bad, but maybe- I don't it... think that makes the dog shit bad. I think that just makes the dog shit- it's a lateral move for the dog shit. Right, the dog shit stays just as gross. I'm not gonna eat around the dog shit, Tyler! <laughs> like, in, in a perfect world, I never have to touch or look at dog shit. That's- yeah, preferably. It's increasingly difficult because I own a dog. Right, I was gonna say, <laughs> like, there's a dog in your house. I have a dog, but, like, very rarely am I too concerned with his shit. Like, I usually give him his privacy. I, uh, I shut the door when I go take a shit, even if it's just me and the dog at home. So, like, I w I've got my privacy, he needs his too. Do you not go pick it up? No, we usually we have a we have a person that uh, mows our lawn and oh, they clean up the dog up. shit for us. 
It's fair. But, um, during the winter, I'm probably going to have to pick up dog shit out of the yard, honestly. It'll be easier to find. And it'll also be partially frozen. So yeah, like, and then it won't be, like, weird and, like, squishy. The worst. When I worked at the uh, pet store, when I worked at, uh, I had to, I took pictures of the dogs. And occasionally they'd just shit on my set. Because they were puppies and they just shit where they stand, you know? Like, they can't help it. They're babies. Yeah. But, um, the worst thing. Oh, no. I just got all eight stars <laughs> or all eight coins and then tried to take off flying, hit the ground, and then and slid off your the death. edge. Um, but, uh, the worst thing, like, n not only does it smell bad and it's squishy, but usually what would ma really trigger my gag reflex is if I could feel it through the paper towel and it was warm. Yeah. Like, that was the trifecta right there. I'd just start going, Gross. <clears throat> it's the worst. Yeah, my mom's dog, that is the latest dog that I've had to pick up from, but he's, like, he's, I think... <laughs> total of eight pounds That's a so his log. poop is essentially invisible <laughs> he's got ghost turds yeah uh we uh one time i used to work with a feller named john juan <clears throat> and uh john juan and i he was he was my assistant when we would take the pictures and uh we would uh we took turns cleaning up shit because because i thought that was just the gentlemanly thing to do Right. But, uh, one time we had what we called, we just referred to as a particularly shitty day. <laughs> and the dog, like, every dog we brought out was shitting. Like, like, the first one did it and said, hey, these two guys are, they put me in a shopping cart. And I was like, oh, this shopping cart looks like a good thing to shit in. Ah. Uh. And, uh, also, <laughs> hey, if you ever go to a, um... Uh, a pet store in Indianapolis that sells puppies called Uncle Bill's Pet Centers, and it's on 38th Street. Uh, odds are the shopping cart you were using has dog shit particles all over it, because we didn't clean the cart very well after we were done, usually. Nice job. Um, but, uh, one day there's like a big sink in the back that you, um, they would wash the dogs in, and what the fuck, Sam? Uh -oh. <clears throat> we just picked up the whole cart and put it in that big sink and sprayed it down. <laughs> <laughs> it was a horrible day. Poor thing. I liked doing it. I, I liked working with John Wong because I used to work with this guy named Craig, and he would never clean up dog shit. What? Right, and then he would just vanish and smoke a cigarette in the middle of it all. What the fuck? He was horrible. I hated working with that guy. John was... Juan, he was cool. I remember John Juan. Yeah, I, met him a, I met him a couple times. You've met John Juan a couple times. John Juan was working security at a show that you went to. Yeah, that was weird. And, and, and Jason uh, got carded th immediately thinks that John Juan is an asshole because John Juan carded him. Well, uh, John Juan's boss was right there. I, 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 was, I was on John Juan's side here too. I'm sorry, Jason, but like... Yeah. Because you left your ID in the car doesn't mean that you're putting John Wan's job at risk. Yeah, that's messed up. Uh, also, I mean, I... his real name wasn't John Wan, but I called him John Wan. Oh, yeah. He also wasn't, like, any sort of, like, Hispanic. No, he wasn't Hispanic at all. He's a white guy. <laughs> but I remember we saw him, and it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like... Were you, th were you with us for that <laughs> show, or did we just tell you about it? Uh, Jason told me about it, and you knew John Juan. Did I? So Because I we had met him. John Juan, we went with uh, Phil and Celeste out to eat. Oh, and met him. And yes. I was like, oh, it's John, like, I've never met you. Hi, John Juan. Yeah, 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 I remember this now. Uh, Sam used to slack off at work and Facebook message me for hours and tell me about what he had done to John that John Juan that day. Hey Tyler, you know who else he was messaging? Me. <laughs> yeah, very true. Uh, I always used to mess with John Juan like all day, every day. I would fuck with John Juan, <laughs> and I had a, a dog whistle that I had. Um, it, well, it was just a whistle. It wasn't a dog whistle. We could hear it fine. But I had a whistle on my desk that was some promotional item we got from some dog food company. And all the time, I would just go, oh, hey, John Juan? And he'd go, yeah? And then I'd toot the whistle at him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd 
did it like dozens of times a day just to irritate him. <laughs> Um, and I used to do photoshops of pictures of John Juan dying and email them to him with the company email. <laughs> like getting struck by lightning and shit. Yeah, I'm, I was a terror to work for. Or work with, rather. I, he didn't work for me. I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> I was an awful employee at that job. I was goofing off all the fucking time. <laughs> Well, to be fair, like, when you were messaging me, I was also goofing off at my shitty job, so... Uh, there were days where I would, like, actual keep, actually keep, like, a working tally of how much work I had actually done that day. And sometimes I would, like, go to work, I would stay there all day, and I would come home having done, like, 20 minutes of work in an 8-hour shift. Yeah. <laughs> what sucks is, like, I honestly think <clears throat> that might be, like, kind of normal for most, like, people who do, like, sort of office -y jobs they don't like. Right. Like, the thing was, I did... I There were... T when I got there, they had all kinds of jobs for me to do. I was kind of like the office catch-all that just did whatever was around that needed doing. Yeah. And then as I started working my way up in the company, we started getting other employees, and they would say, well, we need to give this to, um... We need to give this thing that you do to so-and-so, so that frees you up so you have more time to do this. And then I'd go, okay... And, and then, like, they would never find more stuff for me to do, so eventually, like, there were a whole bunch of people doing my job, and I just had nothing to do most of the time. <laughs> nice. And that's actually eventually why they fired me, because it all blew up in my face when they realized, what does Sam do around here right now? <laughs> oh, it turns out nothing. Yeah, it turns out he does basically nothing all day. Uh, the problem with it was, was appearing to look busy... Like, I had things that I didn't have deadlines for, and I would keep them open on my computer. And then people would come in and say, like, hey, what are you working on? And I'd just go, oh, I'm working on this thing. I can come help you in about 20 minutes here. Yeah. Oh, my nice. God. I, I should, they should take me to court for how much money I built out of that country just by goofing off. <laughs> <laughs> I played a lot of Angry Birds. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. Me too. I... I did a lot of, uh, browsing on Something Awful. Yeah, um, I, I, I bought a Something Awful account, uh, when I had that job. Uh, because same. I just needed shit to do. Same. It was pretty bad. I watched tons of Let's Plays and listened to a lot of podcasts. Um, oh, I listened to so many podcasts. There was a comic book shop, uh, down the street from the office. And so I would go buy comic books on Tuesdays. And then periodically throughout the day, I'd just pretend I had diarrhea, and I would go into the bathroom and just hang out in there and read comic books for, you know, 20 or 30 minutes at a time. Nice. Nobody ever really picked up on the fact that, like, oh, Sam always has diarrhea on Tuesday. <laughs> uh, right now we're playing my least favorite level in the game, by the way. We're like TikTok cock. Hey, that's a cuz. I swore. Shame on you. I kind of forget. What exactly the six setting is on TikTok clock. I think it's random, is what it is. Tyler, I don't know if a cool job is one that you have to slack off every day in order to stay sane. Yeah, like, I occasionally would be literally 60 seconds late for work, and, like, I would get in a lecture for three hours about how the reason that I was late for work is because I haven't accepted Christ and stuff like that. Like, there, oh, shit. There were definite bonuses to working at Uncle Bill's, but also very heavy, like, deficits and bad parts about working there. Yeah. I mean, I worked in furniture, like, uh, and the guy we worked for was this, this terrible megalomaniac. He was an impossible person. Um, the, uh, the owners of Uncle Bill's would come in every, uh, Thursday, and they would... I was not allowed to leave for the entire time that they were there. 
like I couldn't go to lunch and uh, my boss told me that I couldn't take a break because if I was caught taking a break they would think that's all we do is just relax there at the corporate office and then fire everybody and also sometimes they would stay there until like 9 or 10 o'clock at night and I would just have to stay there what the hell and wait and the why? other thing, the other like, thing is the other thing is like I couldn't like just put on some music and just chill out there and mess around on the internet I had to look like I was working at least that's really weird. Like, why would your office managers care that you went home at the hour that you are supposed to go home? Instead of paying me to sit there. Yeah, that's weird. Like, I made, like, 13 bucks an hour or something like that, and they just pay me, you know, an extra 50 bucks just to stay there and do nothing. Like... <laughs> that's so stupid. It was really weird. What star am I doing? The Pit and the Pendulums. My job was essentially, like, sur survive the day without telling the CEO that he's an enormous idiot. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's soul-sucking. Like, God. There was, um... I, I've, I've always had earrings. I've had earrings since I was about 13 years old, and I had to take my earrings out when I worked there because the, the boss was a traditional man. If we saw a man with earrings, you'd think he was a weirdo, pinko punk. Which, to, which to be fair, I absolutely am. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> but who gives a shit as long as I'm doing my job? Right. Which, which also I wasn't, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as it looked like there. you were doing your job, right? Yeah, they didn't give a shit. Yeah, that was I... a, an awful experience that I'll never repeat. Yeah. The, um, the CEO's brother once told on me for falling asleep at my desk, which I did not do. That was fun. You weren't asleep? Got... I was just sitting there, and he, they called me to HR, and they were like, Nick said that you were sleeping at your desk, and I was like, is Nick fucking smoking crack again? Like, this dude is a broken <laughs> man. Um, I remember, um, I would, I was incredibly hungover once, because I'd been drinking before I came to work, and like, it was one of those hangovers that like, you just can't actually function like I, I got up and made it to work and that was like my goal for the day right right and uh, so what happened was I uh, ended up needing to fall asleep I was like dozing off at my desk and I was like there's no way I can keep my eyes open so I just like went into the bathroom and locked the door and laid down on the floor in the corner of the bathroom and fell asleep for an hour. Oh my god, I totally have done that. They built a fitness center in the last couple years uh, when I was at um, the furniture company. And they had a private bathroom that was also a changing room and a shower. But the girls at one had a chair in it. An incredibly comfy chair. Oh, hell yeah. I used to take my coat in there and curl under up underneath my coat like a blanket and take a nap for half an hour. That's the best. <laughs> I set a little alarm and everything. It was amazing. And I would come out and be like, all right, I'm good. And nobody caught on. It was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I never got caught napping. I, I, that was not the first time or the last I took a nap in that bathroom. But, like, uh, I cleaned the bathroom, so I would always know there's nothing on this floor. Like... Yeah, that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah, so I would just go in there and sleep on the floor. Nice. It was great. Hey, and... Danny's here. Hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. We're doing my least favorite level now. The, um, the fitness center bathroom had a little lock on it, so there was no way somebody would be able to catch me. They would just think somebody's pooping. Uh-huh. Yeah, we, uh, we had two separate bathrooms. But they were just like, you know... A bathroom, like a toilet and a sink in the bathroom. Yeah. And, uh, boy oh boy. What a marvelous time to be alive. Uh, the <laughs> building the building used to be a bank, and it used to be like a bathroom with multiple toilets in it, but we they were all taken out. Oh, so it's a huge room. So yeah, it was huge. I didn't even have to sleep, like, curled up around the toilet like a dog. Nice. Like, I 
I mean, who hasn't slept like, curled up around the toilet like a dog, though, in their life? Uh, I have. Oh, I yeah. forgot. I got I got food poisoning once. <laughs> uh, food poisoning or hangovers. Those are both times to curl up around the toilet and sleep like a dog. I have never vomited in association with alcohol. What? Isn't that insane? I never have. I have... I've got a hair trigger gag reflex, but actually throwing up hardly ever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've definitely been so drunk I've vomited before. I haven't. I have. I've been so drunk that I've felt sick, but not sick enough to want to throw throw up. Um, and I've felt. I my hangovers are always worse. I always feel way more nauseous during a hangover, but I've never puked. I just died again. Aww. I'm trying. I to don't get... know. I think I'm just too cautious with my liquor. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say. But um, yeah, I've, I yeah I threw up in that bathroom a lot at work. I had a bit of a drinking problem for a while. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that. Mm, yeah. <laughs> in my early to mid twenties, in particular. But um. Yeah, that, that was a, I think that I had a drinking problem primarily because my job was horrible. Yeah, uh, that's my thing. Um, I had a, I didn't have a drinking problem. I had a lot of other problems at the time, and I think it was just because my life was not very satisfying in any way. Well, I remember so. that was back when you were doing heroin. Oh, I did so much heroin. You, you smoked heroin for breakfast. Heroin. Oh yeah, Danny barfs all the time. Danny. Poor Danny. Poor. They they call him uh, Barfin Dan of Halifax. Is what they call him. That's a good name. Uh, he introduces himself at job interviews, and they're like, "Wait, are you Barfin Dan?" <laughs> <laughs> I used to. <laughs> Hold on, Barf and Dan. There's TV commercials, but it's it's like a used it's like a used car lot commercial. Barf and Dan, the Barf and Man. But, but it's just, hey, it's me, Barf and Dan. I'll throw up. <laughs> wow, Tyler, that's gross. I have a shirt that stains on from one time six years ago. We were like drink tons of vomited. <laughs> vomited Chinese food all over himself. Come on down to Barf and Dan's. Let's go. It's just Danny wearing a house coat, sitting in a recliner. Every now and then he just burps real loud or something and everybody like tenses up. And they get their cameras out. Just pats his belly and goes, false alarm. <laughs> <laughs> what am I even God. doing? Tyler, that could have been like, you could have died. Like going to sleep and then barfing? Like... I hope you were on your side. No, he wasn't, and that's a ghost. Oh no! Tyler the Barf Ghost. <laughs> what am I... What is happening in my life right now, Mallory? I don't know! I'm very confused! You keep falling off! Oh yeah, I forgot about the girl from Breaking Bad, but she wasn't drunk. She was heroined. Yeah, she was very heroined. Oh, spoiler alert! Oh yeah. But we didn't say witch girl from Breaking Bad. She's heroin, they know. It was it was Skylar. It was Skylar. Skylar did so much heroin. She said, I'm sorry I got mad at you for smoking weed, Walt. Now I'm doing heroin and he goes, I am the one who knocks. That was where that scene came from. That famous uh. quote from Breaking Bad. And then he has his little Tourette's tick where he just says Heisenberg. Heisenberg. <laughs> Uh, I was sleep sitting up in a chair. Okay, well, at least you were upright. I, uh... The, the, it would be an honor to die, just like my father. His father, <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. Oh, shit. Did he die on barf? <laughs> Didn't okay. he just die of an overdose? Uh, he died laying on his back. I, it could have been an overdose that killed him, but he had vomit in his mouth. Oh. I'm not sure if he asphyxiated. Like, he would have died either way. Gotcha, you just I don't think... know what he died from specifically. Right. 
<laughs> Marie did a bunch of purple heroin. She shoplifted and died. <laughs> <laughs> Why did she like purple so much? Like, like they never touch on it again. Everything's just purple. She uh, heard that uh, Gogol Bordello song. Uh, start so, wearing purple, wearing purple. And she just obeyed. Yeah, exactly. That's a hell of a song. I really like that one. That's a really good one. I used to be very, very into Gogol Bordello. They uh, make a fucking crazy show, though, man. I those were like I went to see Gogol Bordello twice. And both times it was like right in front of the mosh pit, and it was very difficult to breathe. They th it seemed like that they would be an incredibly fun show to go to, but very chaotic. It's very fun for the first like half hour until you realize that you can't breathe. <laughs> Just because there's a thousand people and they're all there's... jumping on you? Exactly, there's a thousand people, there's no room to breathe, all the air is incredibly hot. Probably a lot of uh, dank weed smoke, too. That seems like that kind of band. I don't remember weed smoke, but like it would also be very difficult to smoke that near the just, mosh pit. Just being that crammed in. Exactly. You don't like, have enough room. We were in the second row, basically, the the first time I went and saw them, and I kept like trying to just get my face into the front row, and like these bitches in front of me were like, I was like, I can't breathe. Just let my face through for just like a second, and then they would they got like real bitchy with me, like I was trying to like take their spot. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm gonna fucking die, and I can't get out. Can you please fucking help me? I'm dead. I'm trying to get the 100 coins, is what I'm trying to do. Is Peter Boyle the one who was in Young Frankenstein? Yes. Okay. I don't think I got what I wanted to get. <laughs> okay, I get it. It took me a minute. My gears were turning. Um, Danny says they're rocks, Marie. They're not rocks, Marie. They're minerals. Tyler says I'm reading those messages in a shouting Peter Boyle voice. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, I've been to three concerts, right? Yeah. In my life, I've been to, no, I've been to four. One of them was one that um, a girlfriend dragged me to, and I was miserable. I hated it. Um. I, uh, I went to my very first concert was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out of their shells. Nice. Does that count? Uh, yeah. It was like does a musical does, concert. Does Disney on Ice count then? Um, do Is it like a band that plays? I mean, somewhere. Because Ninja Turtles coming out of their shells was specifically the Ninja Turtles have started a rock and roll band. Oh. And they okay. perform songs with like guitars and drums and stuff. And then no. Nobody came out with ice skates and a guitar. Okay. That would count as just like an ice performance, I would say. That's fair. Danny's first concert was Celine Dion. That's incredibly Canadian of you. Before or after Titanic. Probably at the same time, right? Yeah. Uh, Danny's second concert was the Tragically Hip. <laughs> <laughs> and then bare naked ladies. And then rush. <laughs> and rush. <laughs> After Titanic. She did the song with a big replica of the ship on <laughs> stage. I love it. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's really good. My first concert was The Strokes, because I don't count the Vans Warp Tour as a first concert. You went to Warped Tour? I did. I really uh, wanted to. I really wanted to see Limp Biscuit and Corn and everybody. Um, I don't. I remember the second time I went, I saw the Sounds, which was awesome. I really liked them. And then we saw Rise Against, who I really hated. Or no, 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 not Rise Against. Uh, Against Me. Okay, yeah, I know them. And uh, Against Me love the instrumentation. They can play some really good music. Then the fucking dude opens his goddamn mouth. And I'm I, like, no, never sing again. The I rest of this was good. Your I, singing is real bad. I can't think of an Against Me song, though. I know them, though. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the song's called. How does it go? I cannot sing it. Yes, I literally... Can. Yeah, you can. No, like, no. I literally can't. Like, I, I can't. 
we, it's we, not... we won't get, like, a copyright ding or anything for you singing a song. No, or... I legitimately, like, I can't figure it out. Like, I wouldn't be able to sing it for you and have you recognize it. Here's, here's the thing. Um, I want you to sing a song. <laughs> I was trying to think of a way that I could trick you into doing what I wanted, but then I just came out right out and said what I was what I was thinking in my head, was I wanted to put you on the spot and embarrass you and make you sing. <laughs> Don't do this to me. Okay, I won't. Um, <laughs> I'm getting so fucking mad right now at this level. Like, that's just enough that I can't get it with a single jump, right? So I have to get some momentum so I can double jump. But, like, oh my god. Like, if I'm... See, then I, when I have momentum, it can carry me off the other side. Mm -hmm. And then I fall and have to do it again. Uh, the song that I remember most is Pints of Guinness Make You Strong. They also did Baby, I'm an Anarchist. I uh, let's see. Maybe I just know them because I know the name of the band. Yeah, I mean, they're pretty popular, like... It's like a weird punk-ish band. The uh, second concert I ever went to, can you guess? No. Uh, weird Al Yankovic. Nice, nice. Uh, during the Running With Scissors tour. Perfect. And uh, it was around Christmas time, and so he sang some of his Christmas songs, like Christmas at Ground Zero and The Night Santa Went Crazy. And when he did his Christmas songs, uh, they had snow machines in the building, and it was snowing the whole time, which was really That's fun. That's awesome. And, um, yeah, that was a really fun t fun show. Did you know he's going to tour again soon? Yeah, I wouldn't mind going to see another Weird Al show, actually. It'd be pretty uh, fun. Because uh, I had a really good time at his concert, and he puts on a really fun, weird show. He's not going to play any parody songs, though. Oh, he's just doing all of his originals? Yeah. That's cool. So, like, I would assume, like, Albuquerque. Genius in France. Uh, Trigger Happy, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I really like that one, um, the You Don't Love Me Anymore song that he did. I don't remember that uh, one. It's, uh, talking about, like, I burned your face off with the barbecue grill. <laughs> <laughs> Now your scars are all healing, but your heart never will. <laughs> <laughs> or no, you burned my face off with the barbecue grill. It's uh, she's doing all these horrible things to him. Oh, okay. That's it. Um, but yeah, that was a, a pretty decent song that he did that I liked. And uh, the song um, "Since You've Been Gone" is always a really good one too. Oh, I like that originals. one. But, um, yeah, I think I'll see a Weird Al show. The third concert I went to was, um, part comedy show, part concert. It, it was the Tim and Eric show. I went to uh, Tim and Eric Live. But they do, cool. like, a, they do, like, a whole, like, half-hour set that's just songs, so. Nice. Uh, that was the place where I went, um, and, uh, Steve Brule showed up. And he was only showing up to certain concert dates that, you know, John C. Riley could get to, and he happened to be at ours. Yeah. And so everybody, like, on like, online, like, on the forums and stuff, were talking about, like, hey, uh, Brule didn't show up at our show. Oh, he showed up at ours. And uh, so everybody was just kind of on pins and needles hoping Brule would show up. And when That's he awesome. did, it was the craziest, like, entire room freakout I have ever fucking been in. Like, <laughs> everybody instantly just went fucking insane. That's awesome. Oh uh, man, I would love to go to a Slayer show, but I also don't want to get my ass kicked by a 16-year-old with God. with anger you would issues. Have to, you would have to be way in the back to yeah, enjoy right, that show. Yeah, right, 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 exactly. I hate crowds, and uh, I, I guarantee that I would be just a nervous fucking wreck at a Slayer show. Yeah, I don't think I could do another Gogo Bodello show. Like, I, I don't think I can do that kind of show again. It's like, too stressful. I can't handle it. Uh, oh, yeah, the fourth concert I went to, the one that I was dragged to, was um, a uh, local uh, death metal band show. 
Yeah. And they were awful. And, like, they were all, like, the bassist kept jumping up and down. Which, of course, you know, you're in a heavy metal band. You jump up and down when you do metal. Yeah. Um, but his bass kept coming unplugged. And then he would stop to plug it back in and then start jumping up and down again. And, Idiot, that's what's doing it. But, like, my other, my thing was, you can choose to do one of these two things. You can either play bass or jump up and down. And you need to make a decision which one you're going to do tonight. Because like, you cannot do both. And I, I just wanted to say to him, like, hey, I came here to watch you play bass. Like, <laughs> like I came here to listen to a, a fucking song. Yeah, not watch you jump up and down. I need one coin. And I'm not sure where I can get one. This is scary. I know. Oh, yep, look. Oh, survive! Oh, there's coins, coins right there. Oh. How do you get to them? Oh, you get... Yeah! Praise God. Ah! Good Lord. Okay, now I'm gonna head back down to the bottom and get the, get the red coin star. I'll just jump. Because it's right down here. <gasps> My heart can't take this. I'm an old man now. <laughs> Tyler went to a, a Primus show. And they were moshing to Primus. That's weird. I went to a Flogging Molly show and they were moshing to Flogging Molly, which makes more sense, but it was still pretty weird. It makes a little sense to mosh to Flogging Molly. Yeah, because at least there's like a, like a weird swingy tune, but like it sort of opened up in front of me and I went, oh, okay. Uh, it was like the parting of the goddamn Red Sea. It was weird. Man, there was a time, I would say from like 19 to 25, I was all about Flogging Molly. Yeah. I really liked right? them. And then, like, it's not even like I don't like them. Like, I've heard a couple of times, just like in the wild, I'll hear a Flogging Molly song go, "Oh yeah," and <laughs> open up the river dance pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, "Oh yeah, Flogging Molly's a band." I'll just go, "Oh right." Also, I'm... I was I was real jazzed about them uh, around probably two thousand four. Mm -hmm, exactly. And, yeah. Like, and then high after school it through down, college or so. Yeah. After my, my love for them cooled down a little bit, I had a friend who was like, let's go to Jacksonville and see a Flogging Molly show. Now, that's not as weird as it sounds, because I was in Savannah at the time. But it was still three hours away. Yeah. It was like, let's go see this show. I was like, okay. And it was at, like, some college. It was actually kind of neat, because the IRA had just recently um, signed that peace treaty. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so they, so they were, like, celebrate. really... Yeah, they were really, like, excited and, like, happy about it. It was cute. Uh, one of my biggest regrets is, uh, when I was working at the hotel, I volunteered to work for somebody, and then they said, I don't need you to work for me, but, like, in the meantime, a friend had asked me, like, uh, do you want to go to this Aquabats concert with me? And I didn't, oh, fuck. I didn't know who the Aquabats were when this happened. Oh, no! And, uh, I said... Uh, no, I told this friend of mine that I'd work for him. You did and, bad. And, and, like, they had told me, like, before then, they said, like, oh, hey, if you end up not wanting to work that, just let me know my plans fell through and I don't need you to work for me anymore. Yeah. And while I was at work that night, it was a night shift, and I had my laptop, I looked up the Aquabats and started listening to them. Uh -oh. And I was so mad! Yeah, that like, would have been a fucking amazing show. Like, I became such a huge fucking fan... And they the old, the nearest they have ever uh, toured close to here was Chicago, and I wanted to go to that show. Like I was willing to drive to Chicago to see the Aquabats. Uh huh. And um, I uh, I had to work that night. Like it was. Barf. It was fucking horrible. You poor thing. I was so sad, but like I'm a member of the Aquabats fan club and everything. Like huge fucking fan. I've got all of their autographs. Which is weird, <laughs> since you've never seen I've them. I've never seen them, but I did get an opportunity. Um, if you pr were a cadet and you pre-ordered their DVD for their TV show, they would all sign it. 
Aww. And so I was a cadet, and uh, they uh, signed the DVD for cadets. Nice. For free, which was cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, to this day, I'm like, if I had only gone to that show... And now they just tour in, like, L.A. and Burbank, and, like, every now and then they go to Texas. Like, that's, like, the farthest east they come. That's weird. Well, it's because they all work in television now, and that's just, like... It's just what they do, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah they, they can't really leave for long they're stretches the, of time. They're in the U.K. right now. Fuck them, then. <laughs> Fucking... Aquabats. I'm no longer a fan. I, I received I guess my cadet it, membership. It looks like uh, Bowling for Soup is gonna open for them. The Bowling for Soup came to town recently, and there was a fucking line around the block, and I'm like, who the hell is fucking going to see the Bowling for Soup con concert? Bowling for Soup is fine. I don't remember a... I, I don't expect a line around the block for Bowling for Soup. <laughs> That's what I'm saying! Like, who... How many of these people... Like, why? <laughs> Wait, hold on. When I was 16 or 17, I got a computer and learned about torrenting. I got into Flogging Molly, and for the reason my grandfather and I got a conversation about music. Showed him Flogging Molly, and he said, Oh, it's worse than I thought. They're Irish. Aww, <laughs> uh, they appear the most with Real Big Fish, my favorite ska band. Oh, that would be really cool. I would see a Real that... Big Fish in Aquabats show. Yeah, that's not ironic, by the way. I fucking love Real Big Fish. Oh, wait, I don't need to go over here, but I keep going over there. Where are they going to be? Shit, are they touring? Uh, on tour. No. <laughs> uh, Ska's not dead, Danny. I was really into Ska. Here's, here's the thing. I had it coming from both ways in that I was a, a, a ridiculous nerd and I played the trumpet, so I loved Ska. Like... That, that I had it like... two. I have two indicators of being a Ska fan. Fand? Fand. F A N D. Uh, and, uh, fucking, uh, uh, no. That's not. Uh, Danny, the reference you're making is not Ska, that's Mambo. Particularly <laughs> Mambo number no. 5 by Lou Vega. Um. Which, I would like to point out, uh, there are two songs on that album, the Mambo Number no. 5 album, that are literally the exact same song, and they are both Mambo Number no. 5. Yeah. Uh, one of them's called I've Got a Girl in Parrot, or uh, I've Got a Girlfriend Everywhere. And, like, if you listen to it, like, Mambo Number no. 5 is a little bit of Monica in my life, and uh, I've Got a Girlfriend is there, uh, Everywhere is... I got a girl in Paris, I got a girl in Rome. <laughs> oh, it's just another list. It's another list, and it's the exact same song. Like, the like the melody and everything, and the chorus and everything, the exact same. Nice. You can't, you can't trick me, Lubega. Oh, 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 shit, yeah, you were toking, uh, Toki Wartooth. That, that's true, too. There was a part where, uh, Toki Wartooth decides he's going to pretend he's a trumpet and says, I am the trumpet. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, so the Aquabats are touring with Bowling for Soup, right? Yeah. It's actually advertised as just a Bowling for Soup concert with special guests, the Aquabats. No! Who is going to see Bowling for Soup in 2017? That's... And not the Aquabats first and foremost. That's upsetting to me. That the Aquabats are not the headliners. That's so weird. That's so weird. And very strange. What year is it, Samuel? Are, are we in 1999? Is that what's happened? It must be. Is it 2002? Is the Willinium upon us? Oh god. Oh. Okay, I've nearly gotten to where I... 
See, that's the other reason I hate this level. Is if you make one mistake, you either die, or you end up at the bottom and have to climb the whole fucking thing again. Uh -huh. it's, it's not fun, it's just a tedious level. Yeah, definitely. No, I have to ride this fucking thing all the way over. You just have to stand here. <laughs> I ma I made Danny think of the Willinium. What if what if the Willinium was like a magic spell that you cast on Danny that like and then he gets sucked into a bottle like a genie. Like that's how you banish him to the underworld. It's like saying Rumple Stilt Skin. <laughs> Also, this is two streams in a row where I brought up Rumpelstiltskin. Ooh, weird. Oh. I got the wrong star. Oops. I'll have to find the other one. This one is called Get a Hand. Are there two clock hands? Yes, there is. There's one up there that I think I can get on. Okay, we're gonna try that. I hate this fucking level. <laughs> like, violently. It's not fun to play, it's just nerve-wracking. But we've got to do it, because we've got to get 120 stars before we go face off against Bowser. Oh shit, Shane. I tried to play Sunshine the other day. Um, uh -huh. It has the worst fucking camera in any video game fucking ever. <laughs> I hate it so much. It is so bad. Like... And I think it's because I'm spoiled by Galaxy right now, because I've been playing Galaxy. But, for some reason, it feels like in Sunshine, the fucking camera defaults to being in front of Mario looking back. Like, uh, it, it constantly doesn't go, just stay behind Mario and follow him. Like, that's the simplest thing. Right, why do you have to make it weird? And if I want to look behind me, I'll mo move it there, but it should just snap to his back. And there's a button to keep the camera behind you. Like, you can keep hitting it over and over again. Uh-huh. But, like... Like, I don't want to worry about that. Right, exactly. Yeah, the C-Stick is fucked in that one, Shane, honestly. It's the worst. And, like, at least in Galaxy, like, I, I thought the big problem in Galaxy was going to be, um... I believe in you. Danny, everybody knows that Lakitu is holding the camera in Mario 64. It's in the opening cutscene, you ding-dong. Matter of uh. fact, here, let's go piss on Danny's parade here right now. Let's go piss on Danny's parade. Look who's behind Danny right now. Or look who's behind Mario, Danny. Look. Look who it is. You can see him right there. It's Lakitu. He's got a camera on a little fishing pole. Danny! First TikTok clock and now this shit. We've got this... This this fake gamer in here doesn't, doesn't know their shit about Mario 64. probably call yourself a gamer and all you play is Candy Crush and NFL Live. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'm sorry Danny, I didn't mean any of that. That was just my rage flowing through my body at this level. What the fuck was I talking about before that? Uh, Rumpelstiltskin? Sure. 
<laughs> okay, do you ever... Okay, this might only apply to me. Do you ever get a piece of art that you commission and you're, like, kind of, like, disappointed with it? Like, it's not bad, and you like it, like, enough, but it's just, like, not really what you expected, or it's not really, like... It doesn't really look like their other work. It just sort of looks like what you drew on the picture that you gave them of the character. Oh... I thought that you meant, like, somebody commissioned you to draw something? No. Well, I mean, I'm sure that's happened, but, like, nobody's ever told me. Oh, Shane just reminded me. I was talking about Galaxy's camera. Uh, Galaxy oh. does a lot of fixed camera angles, and for the most part, when it's not a fixed camera angle, it just stays the fuck behind you, so you can see what you're doing. Uh, like, a anyway, normal, like a normal game. Yeah, like a good game that has good controls and good at, good to play. Sunshine yeah. doesn't do that. Anyway, um, so yeah, I've, I've done that before. <clears throat> and um, in one case, I wanted it to happen. Because I commissioned David Gonterman. If anybody He's... knows who David Gonterman is. I don't know that. No. Uh, David Gonterman is one of those internet weirdos. I think his deal is he's um, like high-functioning autistic. Mm -hmm. And he's obsessed with Sonic the Hedgehog. And he's got like a really highly inflated ego about everything he does and I was endlessly amused by David Gonterman and I gave him p pictures of my characters when I was in college and asked him to draw them for me and paid him for it and so I really wanted him to fuck that up <laughs> because right. that's just how he does um, but there's been other times yeah where like I've commissioned somebody and then they give me back what I and then like it's Pretty much, yeah, exactly what I showed them. I was like, no, I wanted that to look like how you draw. Yeah. That's why I paid you to do it. Right. Like, they... It's really nicely rendered, what they made me. And I... It is good. Like, I like to look... I like looking at it. It is a good picture. But it's, like, really similar to what I drew. And, like, what they draw is, like... You know those, like, um, weirdos models they made in the 60s or whatever? Like, um, so Rat Fink? Yeah, kind of rat finky, but kind of like. Do you know Glorp Gum? I don't know Glorp Gum now. Oh shit. Um, I don't really know how else to explain it. It's it's pretty rat finky. Like generally, their work is very rat finky. And then they gave back me they gave me back like sort of general furry art, and I'm like, that's not. That's not why I paid you. Yeah, that's not why I paid you. I wanted you to fuck up my character, and I gave him the character that like is frequently hit by cars so that like they oh could... so they could definitely yeah so that they could like hit it hit him with a car and like fuck him up like that's what i wanted i don't know i'm a little bit bummed i would be bummed too um uh... i made it i made it my icon anyway because i still like it but it's just like i don't know uh... a little just mild disappointment my, uh, my, I thought that you were going with this in that somebody commissions you to draw something and you're not happy with it, but you give it to them anyway. Oh, I've done that so many times. And, um, and then they're like, it's amazing, and you're like, whatever. Yeah, I've done that a lot. Um, frequently it's, it's like with, uh, at convention commissions where, like, I just don't have the time to redo it. Right, so, yeah. So, like, maybe I make a badge that I don't like, and then they, like, freak out about it and live it a lot, and I'm like, I am sorry. This, <laughs> this is this is not indicative of my usual work. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, uh, I do, like, I used to, like, draw all the time at my, uh, my customer service job, and I would be sitting at my desk drawing, and, like, I, I just had, like, every now and then I just, like, this is going to be a chaos page. And, like, I don't erase on a chaos page, I just go. And it was just like, I would start drawing something, and if I didn't like where it was going, I would stop drawing it and start drawing something else. Like, right. And so, like, it was just a mess on these pages. Just shit everywhere. Half drawn, I would draw on top of other drawings. Like, incomprehensible. And then people would walk by and look at it and go, oh wow, this is really good. And I'm like, no, this is intentionally bad! Like, what don't... are you doing? What are you talking Hold about? Hold on, let me don't show you this. And then I want to say, like, here, look at this thing on the previous page here that I actually put some time in, but then it feels like I'm showing off. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's... 
Right, right, you can't correct it. Right, exactly. I'm like, no, 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 if you think that this is what I can do, no, this is... This is me playing. Like, this is... Good lord. Tyler's making fun of you in the chat. Mean. <clears throat> Hang on, it's fucking buried under shit. Don't know Glorp Gum? Well, do you know Bjarp Fwang? What about Zip Zorp? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Sam, I think you'd really like Glorp Gum. It's just one guy who makes cool stuff. I'll check him out. I'm not too weirded out by people watching me draw. It doesn't bother me that much. Um, the the only problem that I the only problem that I have is I don't want people thinking that I'm showing off. Right. Like I don't want people thinking like, oh look, he thinks he's really fucking special. And like I don't. It's just something I know how to do, and it doesn't bother me if somebody's watching me. But like. Also saying the, like, oh, I wish I could draw shit while I'm doing it. Like, okay, well, sit down and practice. You can. I, I determined in my life that this was something that... that I should spend time doing. And there are also people in this world who have decided, like, I want to learn how to fix cars. I can't do that. Like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I could if I got, like, a book and, like took some classes. Right. It's some time and <laughs> somebody to tell you how to do it. Time, effort, and energy. Right. Yeah, unless you're rubbing a genie lap, then you can say you wish you could draw. Oh, that counts. Yeah, that counts if you're rubbing a genie lap. Wait a lap. minute, wouldn't they just not do anything? Because you technically anybody can draw, they just can't draw well. Oh. Uh, do you know what a good genie wish would be, is I wish I could draw exactly what I was thinking of the first time without having to erase or anything. Most people can't do that. No, no, that would be the genie wish, right? Like, that would be the good one. Yeah, that's true. Like, I could draw this exactly the way I'm picturing it in my head. <laughs> BR Fwang. Fuck off. <laughs> What about B. Arthur? I like B. Arthur. I like B. Arthur too. She's a nice lady. Probably. They should change she's name. a corpse now. They should change your name to D. Arthur for dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sorry, B. Arthur. My favorite character on the Golden Girls was Sophia anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, Sophie is the best one. And then I really like Rose, too. I, I like Sophia because she was like a female George Burns. <laughs> 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 and, and Rose was just like an old, lusty... <laughs> and that's Blanche. Oh, no, no, yeah, but Blanche was. Yeah, sorry, excuse me. Uh... Oh, yeah, B. Arthur was in the Star Wars uh, Christmas special. Oh my god. She sings a song in it. What uh, the when, fuck? When I was a little boy, I used to think that the Golden Girls was about my... Uh, I thought that my Grandma Pat was Dorothy, and uh, my great-grandmother, um, Granny, who lived with her, was uh, Sophia. And uh, <laughs> I always wondered why they made a TV show about my grandma's... And also why I wasn't in it. And I also wondered in real life who uh, Rose and Blanche were supposed to be. <laughs> what the fuck? I love it. Like, it was always confused to me when I was a little kid. Have I ever mentioned on this show that I was a really dumb little kid? <laughs> Weren't most of us? I was really fucking stupid, though. And it remains so. Like, like... <laughs> That did not change. <laughs> Nothing changed. Uh, let's see. I think I'm doing this star right. I don't know Rainbow Road very well either. Kind of the, the later levels I don't know as well, because sometimes when I replay this, I don't do them and lose interest because I hate TikTok Clock so much. Right. I like Rainbow Road just fine. Or, um... What's this one called? 
This isn't Rainbow Road, is it? I think it is. It's called the road, it's called the Rainbow Road. It is the road where you go. Do you remember that video? No. It's really good, I'll send it to you. <laughs> yeah, screws are crossing the rainbow, that was it. Wait, what? Oh, I just hit save and quit on accident. Oops. We've got seven more stars to get, Mallory. I think we can pull this off tonight. I believe in you. You can do this. The computer's about to die. I might have to leave and get a cord, oh no! but I'll let you know when. Well, six of them are in Rainbow Road, so we're like on the last level aside from fighting Bowser again. And the last star is uh, in Bowser's final level, so... Nice. You may need to go get a cord. If you do, make it a cord for me. Okay. De dedicate the cord to me. Give it to you? Yeah. No, you don't have to give it to me. I don't want it. I just, like, you know how, like, you can adopt a highway? Oh. <laughs> can I... Ded I wanna, you're gonna... I'm gonna dedicate it to you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's very you're kind welcome. of you. No problem? Um... <laughs> oh, Mallory, there is something that I wanted to tell you about and put you on blast for. Oh, what the fuck? Are you ready for this? I wanted to spring this on you while we were talking so that you can't weasel your way out of the conversation or pretend you get, didn't get the message. Oh god, um, okay. You haven't shared my GoFundMe anywhere. You have a GoFundMe? Have I not- you've not been paying attention at all to my GoFundMe? No. I have a GoFundMe where I'm trying to buy a Switch. I've raised $84. That's not bad. Eighty-four twenty. Nice. And, um, here's the thing. I went to a doctor. I've got, I've got to tell you the whole story of the GoFundMe now. Wait, is it on your Twitter? Is this real? Yes! I've been posting about it all week! God. I'm really bad at this. Read oh, my posts! You normally show up on the, like, did you miss it? So, anyway, I'm started to go fund me, and my doctor told me that if I do not play Super Mario Odyssey and have a Nintendo Switch, I will actually die. Like, <laughs> like it's like going to the doctor and he says, if you don't start chemotherapy right now, you're done. He said, if you do not play Super Mario Odyssey, this is it. Like, you'll die. And so, I, who am I? He's a doctor! I need Mario Odyssey or I will die. <clears throat> I've got the note from my doctor in there that says that. And so then I talked to my lawyer, and my lawyer told me that anybody who either doesn't donate or completely ignores it and doesn't share it can go to jail for manslaughter. <laughs> Eric donated twice! He did! <laughs> And uh, Danny donated, but did it through uh, PayPal because um, he doesn't have a credit card and GoFundMe doesn't take uh, PayPal. You have $130, you liar. Who else donated? Anonymous. Holy shit, I have 130 What the fuck? I, I need to know who that was. Somebody else donated. Hooray! No, um, no, no. Oh, God. <laughs> I put a lot of zeros in that. Keep going! Keep going! <laughs> but anyway, so here's my thing. Here's my thing. Um, I also have spoken to my friend Colin, who is a professional wrestler. He has a fight tonight. Uh, if Colin finds out that there are people who have ignored it, he's going to beat him up for me before yeah. they go to jail for manslaughter. And furthermore, um, my friend Lisa is an actual practicing witch, and um, she is casting a prosperity spell for me. So, like, this is this is where it's going, right? It's fucking popping off in a very real way. I'm trying to type. Also, um, I've made a, a series of errors here in my oh, For playthrough. fuck's sake, do we really have to give a credit card number? Um, yes. Shit, okay, I have to go get a plug and a credit card. I'll be right back. Alright. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would normally bitch, but you're giving me money, so I'm not going to bitch at all about you running in the middle of the stream. So, <clears throat> anyway, when she gets back, I'll continue chiding her. Um, but, man, I didn't know that I got another donation overnight. I haven't checked my email today. That's fantastic. $130. I'm a, more than a quarter of the way to my $410 goal. Um... Furthermore, um, it's a it's four hundred and ten dollars because um, and here's why it's four hundred and ten dollars uh, to pay for the tax and so I can get a Wendy's chili on the way home because it's been getting cold out and I I think a chili would really hit the spot in this cool weather. Um, but that's it. That's the only other things I'm gonna buy is uh, Super Mario Odyssey and um, furthermore. A Wendy's chili. Uh, when I get Wendy's chili, you know I put three or four of the hot sauces in it. Oh, hang on. I just got an email. Who's it from? Oh, never mind. It wasn't from Mallory. Uh, but yeah. Well, now I've got Mallory on my side. What? Oh my god, what's happening? Is there a Mujuu in Mallory's house? What the fuck is going on? Uh, stay with us, folks. I think that we've just created our own creepypasta and we're gonna hear Mallory die in the background because I don't know what all that screaming was about. Fuck! Oh no! M -m 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 Mallory? Uh. Oh no. Maybe it's too late, guys. Did we just. Did we just hear the actual demise of my friend? Oh no. Mistakes were made. This is just like unfriended. <laughs> Tyler says, keep your hand out of the blender. Well, if this is an unfriended situation. I'm back. Oh, thank God. We were thinking this was going to be an unfriended situation because we could hear you yelling in the background. And we thought yeah. that a ghost was killing you. No. But the only picture on the end, uh, the only thing, the only ghost that would kill you for posting a picture of uh, pooping its pants on the internet would be me, because you've taken many pictures of me pooping my pants, so. Well, it happens all the time. Do you know that sort of ends up in pictures. Have you seen uh, Unfriended, Mallory? Uh, no. The reason that the ghost is killing these people is because they posted a picture of her online pooping her pants while drunk. That's hilarious. Pooping her pants. Yeah, she got really drunk and fell asleep and pooped her pants. What do you think of them apples? Sounds dumb. But anyway, I was gonna chide you for not for not sharing it anywhere. But now that you you were going to share it, I no longer need to chide you. Right. I also retweeted it and gave you fucking money. Wow. I'm gonna have to create like another like tier because I don't think Eric shared it. He just gave me money. So you need to be, like, I've got All-Stars, and I've got Paisanos, and then I've got, um, Traitors, which are the people that have ignored it. I need to have, like, a, a third tier of people who do both. <laughs> who posted the video of my poopy butt, Tyler says. I'm trying to get a hundred coins here. What do you think of them apples? Let's see. Do you know what amazes me about this whole internet thing? Is that I've done functionally nothing 
and I've just asked for money so I could buy video games, and I have people online and friends that are willing to say, yes, we'll give you money for absolutely nothing. <laughs> it's not even like a Patreon. Right, yeah, right. I'm not doing anything. I'm just begging. <laughs> Now, some people, it may be because they feel sorry for me and feel pity. The difference is I have no shame, so I'm okay with being pitied. <laughs> like, <that's... laughs> I don't have any pride whatsoever, so... So have at ya. I mean, you made some good money and gotten some free video games for it. Mm-hmm. Yep, sorry. <laughs> I feel like I've, I've contributed to the world in some manner. In, like, sometimes, occasionally, I'll play a video game and yell into a microphone. People seem to like that, right? Yeah. Oh, I just... I thought there was something underneath me. Oh, Danny sees it as a con contribution to further streams, right. Because I did say that once I get the Switch and Odyssey, I am going to... The majority of my playthrough of Odyssey, I am going to stream it. That's fair. Yeah, I'm having trouble remembering where things are in this level. But you know what? We're... We're all adults here, right? <laughs> we'll get through this together. Do you think that, like, if there were an actual magic carpet in the world, like the magic carpets in this game, do you think that it would need a rainbow to travel on, or do you think it'd just fly like the magic carpet in Aladdin? Uh, I don't know. I think it depends on how the physics of it works. Okay, what if, like, you go to the magic carpet store? I think, ideally, it wouldn't have the rainbows. I'm picturing the magic carpet store, okay? And I, th the image I have in my head of a magic carpet store could best be described, like, generously you could describe it as regressive. Um, realistically, you could describe it as slightly racist. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. Because I'm picturing, like, a weird, like, desert swami kind of situation. <laughs> And I'm not even sure if the phrase swami is uh, racist. What is or not. a swami? Um, like I like okay. I'm gonna say another racist term here, like a desert gypsy, right? Like I think, like when I picture a swami, I picture them like sitting on a magic carpet. They're wearing like like a cloth around their waist and no other clothes and a turban. And maybe they've got like the, like a long flute and like a basket with a cobra in it and you know, like it's it's definitely a racist thing that I but have in my head. Is that a swami or is that just like, is that just like that you know snake charm or bullshit? Is that the same thing? What the fuck is a swami? Yeah, just look up what a swami is. And swami. we'll find out if, if a swami is a racist thing, for one, because I know gypsy is. Okay, it's a real thing. Okay, what's a swami? Uh, sometimes abbreviated SW period, really. You, you can it's... have... Oh, <laughs> shit! Danny is fucking schooling us. A swami is a Hindu religious figure. Yeah, I just looked that up. Also, Danny. Okay, so, 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 so. Can I just say, I was not being racist, I was just being culturally ignorant. Because <laughs> so Hindu a, isn't a race! It's ascetic or yogi who has been initiated into the religious monastic order. Okay, so. A little culturally insensitive on my part. Now, well, I, here's, yeah, here's yeah, but it thing. looks like it's just a synonym for like a yogi. Or a guru. Oh, okay, so not that bad. No, I mean, like, I guess I always thought a swami, w I didn't really picture it, you know, based on all the shitty, horrible versions of it in, in 
sort of semi old sixties cartoons. Like see, that's the thing. My my interpretation of a swami comes from like old Popeye cartoons. That's what I was 50s. gonna say, Popeye cartoons. It's just like a guy with a fucking flute. Right. I know what a swami is because I used to watch Tin Tin when I was a kid. Exactly. Like, and Tintin is not known for being very racially or, or culturally sensitive, unfortunately. Because <laughs> it turns out the Belgian dude that made it was from forever ago. Right, 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 exactly. That doesn't excuse that behavior. But my, I mean, okay. I wouldn't tolerate that behavior now, but it, it I mildly excuses them at the time. They didn't know. I remember, um... I remember uh, one time I got into a discussion with a friend of mine about gypsies. Right. And I said, okay, here's the thing. When I say gypsy, I am not talking about the Romani people. I am literally talking about, like, an old hag in a covered wagon who rides around, like, with, like, an old blind donkey covering the wagon. Yeah, like the, and the she, fake And she's version. got, like, long fingernails and, like, a thousand pearl necklaces. And she's, like, got a big turban with a jewel in the front of it. And she's got, like, one tooth in her whole head. And she's like, Come, let me read you your fortune, child. Like, I'm talking about, like, a weird cartoon character. Right. Which... which <laughs> and, like, I would never call somebody a gypsy, unless it was Cher, which I, I think she's owned it. Because <laughs> she made that song, Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, like, the like the gypsy encouraged the cowardly dog. Or in, in any, like, racist old cartoon is how I'm seeing it. I And, like, here's the thing, when, like, people that are that would be offended at the term gypsy, I would never call them gypsies. But specifically, an old woman who, like, knows magic and reads the future in a crystal ball and all this, she's definitely a gypsy. And I'm not saying that she's even, like, pretending that she reads the future and is just doing that for money like she's a carny. I'm saying an actual magic user. Like a a certain type of witch is definitely a gypsy. Yeah, I mean <laughs> because you're you're talking about like you're not talking about a Romani person. You're talking about the fucking caricature. Right. That's exactly it. I'm not talking about a real human being. Yeah. Nobody's actually like that. Like occasionally I've talked about like a gollywog, and that's an incredibly racist caricature. But um. <clears throat> but also, I've never called somebody a gollywog. I'm talking about the actual, like... Right, you're not calling something. anybody who exists a gollywog. I'll, that would be horrible. Exactly. <laughs> yes, Professor Trelawney from um, from uh, Harry Potter is a gypsy. For fucking sure. It's like, um... I've all, Have I told you... I've, I've mentioned this on the stream before. I'm going to bring it up again, though. Mallory, have I ever told you about my dream job, where I become an actual, like... Okay, I came up with this idea for a job, and it's for people who want, like, a little bit of character in their neighborhood. Literally. Um, uh -huh. So, I want to have a service where you pay me, probably by the month, I would say, and I will be the neighborhood tramp. And what this means is that, like, I run around on the property... And, like, occasionally steal pies off of windowsills. And, like, offer to do, like, odd jobs around the house. Like, I come up and I'm, like, wearing my fingerless gloves and I've got, like, dirt on my cheeks. Mm-hmm. And I so say, just... like... It's a neighborhood imp. I say, like... Ma'am, I couldn't help but notice you got a bunch of leaves and dirt up on your porch if you let me borrow that there straw broom. I'll, I'll clean it up for you. <laughs> uh, I'm just kind of like a simple homeless man that lives on the... And then, and then, she'll say, Why, sure, and I'll, I'll do it for a dollar fifty. And she'll, okay, fine. And then she comes back a little while later, and I've done no work, but I'm taking a nap in her hammock. <laughs> like, like, that's the kind of... Like, yeah, I'm the neighborhood tramp. And then, like, um... Like, the, the kids, when they get off from school... 
they, they'll come over and they'll go, Oh, Samuel's out! Samuel's out in the yard! What's he doing? And then, like, the kids will come over and I'll tell them jokes and tell them stories about living my life on the rails looking for work. But you're so like um like a modern day Tom Sawyer. I am I am very much not a hobo. Like at night I go home, I sleep in a house. But to add some flavor to these rich people neighborhoods, I portray a hobo. <laughs> and like like you know how like um with the fake Santa Claus, not the real one, you put out milk and cookies and stuff. Like, they say, oh, can we put a pie on the windowsill for Samuel? And, like, it's a treat for me to, like, steal a pie off the windowsill for them. Oh, look, he came and got it! He came and got the pie off the windowsill! And then, like, like when the kids are bored, they'll see me out there, and I'm, like, I'm, like, sitting on, like, a tree stump, and I've made myself a little fire, and I've got my bindle logged up against, leaned up against my tree stump, and I've got maybe, like, a little banjo on my knee, and I'm playing a little tune. And I've got like a, a soup pot, and I'm making a slum Goulian. Like, <laughs> so you want to you want to exist in 1865? Right, I want to be a hobo without, but without the homelessness. And like, I'm like a I'm like an insured and licensed hobo. Like, <laughs> like, like you know that I'm not actually going to break in your house and cut your throat to get money. I, I'm all the fun parts of having like a fun homeless vagrant that hangs out in 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 your in in your neighborhood, right? And then like like at the like oh hey um, Samuel, I'd go by Samuel because it's more old timey. Uh, they would say like oh Samuel, I'm very sorry to tell you this, but um, we uh, we can't afford to keep you this month. Uh, there was some layoffs at the plant, and I would go say no more, and then I'd just be gone the next day. And they'd and but then, like, the parents could tell the kids like, oh, we don't know where Samuel went. He must be out riding the rails, right? And Jesus. then and then it's a big it's a big celebration. Like when I come back. Like, like, so are you? Do you have like a little like impromptu parade of children? Like, no, I'm thinking that the kids, like, they they are able to find me on the premises, and I'm able to like, like, and like the other thing is like it's a little bit forbidden like by the parents to hang out with me. You know, they're like, oh, you stay away from that old hobo that hangs out on the property. But the kids get to get to be a little rebellious, and then I just, like, tell them jokes and show them magic tricks and stuff. I like this lore that you've made for yourself. Well, that's the thing, that's the thing. Like, yeah, I make up a lore, and I get to tell them stories about how, like, the railroad bulls chased me off in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and, like, I get to tell them, like, cool stories about being a hobo. And, like, I, I'm thinking, like, I'm not just for the kids, though, right? Like... Like, sometimes, like, you know, they'll they'll come home from work after a long, hard day, and then they'll look at me and see me, like, pushing an old shopping... No, I don't want to be that kind of hobo. Hang on. I don't want to don't be, you... like, a homeless person. Don't you, um... Don't you need to take banjo lessons? I do need to take banjo... See, I need to learn how to play the banjo. That's one of the things holding me back. And learn how to play the harmonica. I'm thinking the harmonica would be a great hobo uh, musical instrument because it fits in a, in a bindle. Yeah. I mean, a banjo's got a strap. Banjo's got a strap, but it didn't fit in a bindle. Yeah, but you don't necessarily have to have everything in the bindle. Well, I can have most things in the bindle. Yeah. Yeah, see, Shane's got the idea. Kids find me in the treehouse eating a cherry pie. And then they're like, oh, ha, ha, They laugh. And then, like, I, I like, put my finger up to my lips and shh. Samuel K., lovable tramp. Yeah, that's my thing. I'm going to be a lovable tramp. I think it's the perfect job. I think you'd do it well. Because, like, already kids love me. I'm a very amusing <laughs> and weird Hopping person. trains, eating garbage, drinking wood alcohol. That's completely me. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is nobody pays me to do this yet. 
I need to find one red coin, and then I will have found all eight of them. And I'll also have get found 100 coins, and I can get a star, but I can't find that last red coin for the life of me. There it is. It's down in the bottom, yeah. Look at that, two stars in a row. <laughs> Like, I don't- I really don't want it to be creepy that I'm hanging out with the kids, right? I want them need, to have, like, the Tom Sawyer experience. You will need to wear a vest. You will need to wear a top hat where the top of it is, like, opened up like a soup can. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, let's see. Suspenders would be helpful. Uh, suspenders? I'm thinking, like... I'm wearing a pair of kind of pants that are a little bit too big... The button is missing, and they are tied on with a piece of rope. And, um, like, I'm using, a, a like, an old piece of rope as a belt. You got a big hole in your shoe where your toe sticks out. A big hole in my shoe where my toe sticks out. Um, unshaven. My hair is kind of sticking out underneath from underneath the top hat, kind of funny. Um, I've got, like, uh, fingerless gloves, naturally. And, um... I've got a bindle. Occasionally... Hey, Trey, how's it going? Occasionally wearing sort of semi-clown makeup. I don't know how I feel about the clown makeup. No, but like, 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 a, scary. like a hobo clown, though. Like, with the big frown and, like, a re like just a... Not, like, full pancake makeup, but, like, i am like got a beard, but then I've got, like, the big frown painted on my face. I guess a uh, clown frown is way less scary than a clown smile. Whoa, God, yes. Sad clowns aren't scary, they're just pathetic. Like... <laughs> Artie the strongest man in the world was not a fucking hobo, Tyler. Artie the strongest man in the world lived in a porta potty that was also bigger on the inside, and he had, he a, had a big he party. He had a home. He had a home. Remember when he, uh, when he was, when he turned normal after leaving, uh, Little Pete? And he's, like, he, like, walks out of his porta potty in the middle of nowhere, and there's, like, like, a bunch of people in the porta potty and he's like, I'm gonna go check on those burgers, Gene! Yeah. Already the Strongest Man was not a hobo. I, although I can say, my presence in people's lives would be already like because um, I want I want to be like a local weirdo, and like my kid, people's kids' parents don't really approve of me being around, but they also know that I'm relatively harmless. the The effect on their children I don't want them to think that my life riding the rails and being a hobo is like admirable. Like that's why they don't want me around because they don't want a kid saying I want to be a hobo too. Yeah, I'm thinking mm. that's... I think that's how this, uh, this job is going to go. Telling kids how to stop bullies? Yeah, right, exactly. Like, if a kid has a bad day, I'm like, pull up a stool, partner, and tell me all about it. Like, I'm a little bit of a babysitter occasionally. You have a lot more responsibilities at this job than you did at Uncle Bill's. <laughs> that's true. But I also get to, like, some of my responsibilities are literally just stealing pies and taking naps. Like... Those are pretty good. Like, they find me in their shed, like, laying in a pile of hay, sleeping. Who has hay? Like, these are rich people, so they probably have, like, horses and stuff. Trey, we're talking about Sam becoming a lovable tramp as a job. Yeah, becoming a lovable hobo as a job. And instead of, like, begging for scraps and stuff, people just pay me, like, a couple hundred bucks a week. And, like, you see, here's the thing. Like, you can get me for, like, a three-month in month engagement. Oh, no. I'm gonna have to do this all again. Oh, my God. <coughs> We're fine. Um, <laughs> hang on. I can probably pull this off in a manner that is good for both of us. <laughs> oh, no. I just died. It's going to be a thing, Trey, when I start my company. We're, we're, but here's the thing, here's the thing. I'm going to be the first hobo 
when I make enough money, I'm going to hire other hobos so they can do other neighborhoods. And, like, I'm essentially, like, like a hobo uh, agent. Like, you know how you can hire a clown for a birthday party or a magician? This is just hiring a lovable hobo for your neighborhood. I'm gonna... Uh, oh my god. If I thought that I could get on Shark Tank to pitch this idea... Can you imagine how great that would be? God. Holy shit. And, like, maybe, like, like, the Homeowners Association hires me to, like, do a whole neighborhood at a time. Jesus. Oh, it'd be the best. What kind of marketing does Sam the Lovable Tramp have? Well, that's the thing. I say, like, do you want to live in a simpler time? Do you like Mark Twain? Like, have I got an idea for you? Like, I'm kind of like an adult Huckleberry Finn at this point. Right. And, like, I'm, I'm a little bit of a rascal. I'm a thief. And, like, maybe I teach one of the kids how to fight. See ya, Danny! It's, it's for people that... that love that kind of old-timey feel, don't want the danger of homeless vagrants. I think it's perfect. Because if I had a friend that was a hobo, I'd be all about it. I'd be bringing him cans of beans. I'd be having him tell me stories about people, like, scraps he'd gotten into and stuff. Like, I'd teach the kids that hobo language. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, I'd teach them that. Like, like, if you draw a picture of, like, something that looks like a cross with a circle around it. Yeah, I'd teach hobo code to the kids. It's exactly what I'm saying, Shane. Like, I, like, if you see, like, a cross with a circle around it, it means that, like, a religious widow lives here, and if you tell her a sad story, she'll give you free food. Like, that kind of stuff. Man, it'd be great. And, but then, like, you know, like, at 9 o'clock, I, I just go home. To my right. house. And, like, I, I take off my, my hobo vestments. Put on like a bathrobe and didn't you say the other day? <laughs> hang up, threw hang water up your tramp hat. Hobo. I've never thrown water at a hobo. Who throws water at a hobo? I've always been nice to homeless people I've met because they're homeless and their lives are fucking horrible. <laughs> I don't want to make their life worse. I'm annoyed with the vagrants that live around us because it's the same people every day that ask me for money, so I normally either ignore them or just tell them I don't have anything. Well, that, that's the thing, like... I'm not disrespectful, I'm just like, no, nah, I don't have anything for you, dude. I feel really bad. One time I had a, um... Trey thinks that I threw water at a hobo. That upsets me. I would never throw water at a hobo. That's so rude. But, um... Yeah, that's that's exactly how I'd want to be. Like, uh, I had... I was at uh, GameStop once. I went into a GameStop. And this guy came up to me, and he was, uh, he was a vagrant. And I believed his story, too, because his story was really weird. And, um, you know, he came up to me and he said, like, Hey, man, can I take a moment of your time? And I had some change and stuff, and I was willing to give him the change, you know? Right. Like, uh, whatever. And he says to me, like, um, my little boy is... It's almost Christmas time. It was, like, uh, November or something like that. He's like, it's almost Christmas time. And, uh, there's nothing that my little boy wants in the world more than an Xbox 360. And he said, can you go in there and buy me an Xbox 360? What the fuck? And I was like, that's a big fucking ask, dude. Like, yeah. That's a, like, even a used one's a hundo. Like. Yeah. And, um, I said to him, like, no, nah, man, I'm sorry, that's a little out of my price range. Like, 
Like, I can give you what I got here. And so I, like, reached into my pocket and, like, gave him, you know, like, I had, like, a couple of bucks in cash or something. Like, uh, you know, I was like, here, you can have this. Like, that's fine. And he was just like, there's no way you can buy me an Xbox. I was like, dude! If I was going to buy myself an Xbox, what do you think that I would be spending that on normally? Just nothing? Right. But, like, seriously, like, and then I told the guy, like, I'm sorry, I hope you, good luck, I hope that helps. Like, <laughs> Sam says this as he asks strangers for a Nintendo I'm Switch. I'm not asking them for a Nintendo Switch, I'm asking them for a small donation. I don't see what the difference is. Or, wait, I do see the difference. There's a big difference. And I'm not asking strangers. Well, I'm, I am, oh, I'm asking anybody who will give me money. If that happens to be a stranger, so be it. See, here's the thing. I'm, I'm hoping for individual contributions of, you know, four or five dollars, and then it adds up to the whole thing. Like, uh, like the homeless man that I met should have been doing, I think. <laughs> I, I, I think that if you just ask, like, hey, um, my, my kid wants an Xbox for Christmas. Can you spare a couple of bucks? Yeah. So that I can help my kid get an Xbox. Rather than, like, if I hit my GoFundMe and said, I am only accepting donations of $410 or more. Right, nobody's going to give you any money. I'll get nothing. My, my problem with this homeless man, or I don't think he was homeless, he's buying an Xbox. He has some way to, at least has a, t a house and a television or an apartment or something. Guaranteed he doesn't have a kid, though. He probably just wanted the Xbox for himself. That might be true. But... I, I'm, my problem wasn't that he was asking, it was that he had a big ask, and I think he would have done better if he marketed himself differently. <laughs> I, I wanted to give him marketing advice, maybe, is what I'm trying to say. Right. Which, I used to be a marketing coordinator. That was one of my, that's one of my bona fides. We're nearly done. I wanted to put this underground in a coffin tonight. We've got one more star on Rainbow Road to get. And it's, I think, the easiest one. And then we're going to go fight Bowser. So do you know what... Uh, I think this is probably a good time to start talking about what I'm going to do after this. Um, so, Mallory, as you know, I was streaming Dark Souls and then Dark Souls 3. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I got sick of Dark Souls 3. I, I got okay. burned out. And so, I'm going to continue Dark Souls 3 eventually, but I, when I want to. Um, so what I'm going to do after this, after I finish Mario 64, is I'm going to begin streaming, uh, Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes, which is the GameCube remake of Metal Gear Solid 1. Cool. I have never played nor seen it played. So that will be enjoyable for everybody, is watching me geek out about Metal Gear for a while. Have you ever Let's Played that before? I've never Let's Played any um, Metal Gear Solid game. That's surprising. I know, because I like Metal Gear so much. Um, I did do a couple of episodes with Eric at one point. Um, of me just goofing around in Metal Gear 5 and just kind of showing some stuff off and messing around and doing some of my favorite missions. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I, uh, I never did, like, a formal Let's Play. It was just kind of like, Eric and I are bored and we don't know what we want to record for the Let's Play, and so let's just record me playing Metal Gear for a while. Right. But not, like, an intentional, I'm going to play Metal Gear. Right, Exactly. Um, Metal, uh, Twin Snakes does work on Dolphin, yes. Um, and I've actually only played Twin Snakes once. I rented it, um, when it came out, and I intended to buy it, but I never got around to it. And also, I never bought it because I, I just had the disc of Metal Gear Solid 1, right? Like, so I just played Metal Gear Solid 1. <coughs> I've got to wait for the thing to come back. As I fell. Really? It's still going? Oh, wait! 
I'm an idiot. I was at the end of another one, not at the beginning of that one. <laughs> Whoops, my bad. I just noticed that. Anyway, yeah, but that's my plan. I'm going to be doing a uh, Metal Gear. I would like to eventually do, I think, a Let's Play of Metal Gear 5. Uh, just because I know that game really well, because I played it like 200 hours of it when it came out. Right. And I think that would be a fun one to do. Uh, the issue that I have with it is it is such a large game and it's an open world game that routing it's going to be really hard. I was going to say, I feel like open world games would be difficult. It's like, it's trying to like trying to let's play um, like Skyrim or something. Yeah, or like, um, like a Grand Theft Auto let's play never works well. Yeah, because there's no, like, track. It's just like, I'm going to go fuck around and do this. But that's only enjoyable for the person playing. Right, yeah, exactly. Uh, the cool thing about Metal Gear, though, is um, it's an open world game. <clears throat> but the individual missions, like, will take you to, like, a, like a mission select screen and stuff. That's cool. And when you accomplish your mission, like, a thing comes out that says, like, oh, you did your mission and you, now you have to come back to base. So it feels like playing a level in a video game. Like, right, it feels like playing something with a home world. Right. Sort sort of, even though there's no home world. There is a home world. Well, you know what I mean. Like, I can't imagine every time you have to go back to quote-unquote base, you have to actually be there. Oh, no, you don't. You can select a mission from the helicopter or go back to base. But you always, like, to end a mission, every mission you end, you have to go get back on the helicopter. Like, that's yeah. how you... I guess that's the home world, or at least, like, the level select screen. Right, it's 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 Peach's Castle in this game. It's the world right. hub. But yeah, I think that would be a fun one to do. Uh, and I'm also not the best at the game. I'm pretty good at it. But also, part of the fun of watching a Metal Gear Let's Play is when things go bad. So. Ugh. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you can use a crate to get back to things, too. That's true, that's true. Uh, yeah, that's the really funny thing. Uh, in order sometimes to get back to base, Mallory, you can attach balloons to things to steal them. <laughs> and um, you can steal anything. Animals, people, vehicles... Anything you can tie to a balloon and steal in uh, in uh, Metal Gear 5. And if you just want to leave the level, you can stand on top of a shipping container and put a balloon on it, and it just takes you to base. Nice. That's it's handy. It's really good and really silly. You can eventually get, um, instead of using a balloon, it opens up a wormhole and sucks it into a wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really stupid game. Um, you can do, um, research and development on things, right? So, like, you get, like, you have to steal, like, oh, if you steal, uh, oil, you can make plastic, so you can make lighter weapons and stuff like that. Um, in, uh, Mother Base, you can make a squirt gun. <laughs> and it's just a squirt gun. And all it does is squirt water. And you can just run around squirting soldiers all day if you want to. That's dumb. It's really stupid, it. but it's really good. Uh, also, um, you can carry, like, a pistol and then, like, a larger weapon. Oh, yeah, the, uh, the water gun does short out electrical things, but that's, like, the one use it does have. But, um, like, if you decide to take the water gun with you on a mission, it takes up a weapon slot. So, um, like, you can have a water gun and a bazooka, and those are your two weapons for the level. Nice. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a little trial and error, as I remember where all the red coins are. I apologize. But I know where most of them are. Yeah, there's one down here. I knew there was one here. I would be down with, uh... I would be absolutely okay with, uh... Let's Playing Snatcher or Police Knots. What are those? Uh, those are, uh, Hideo Kojima's games that are not Metal Gear. 
Gotcha. Uh, or Zone of the Enders is his other big one. Or wait, did he do Zone of the Enders? Yeah, he did, didn't he? Oh, now I'm confused. Shit, did Kojima do Zone of the Enders? I know that there's a Jehudi arm in, um... In Metal Gear 5, but I don't know if that's just because he's friends with the Zone of the Enders guy, or if he made it. I should know this. He did, I guess, Tyler says. Don't throw me that way! Fuck, I died. Okay. <laughs> I just, I thought for a second, I was like, oh, I should let's play Psychonauts, and I'm like, wait, you're not very good at that game. <laughs> Psychonauts is a really fun one. It's a really good game. I'm a little surprised I haven't let's played that, too. It's a really good game. I love that game. Um, it's one of those ones, it, it's the only thing that I feel that Double Fine ever did well. Same. They, like, when Brutal Legend came out, it was still, I'd like, the excitement that I had for it was just on the coattails of playing Psychonauts for the first time, and then played Brutal Legend, I was like, oh, I didn't know this was going to be a shitty RTS. I wanted to play a heavy metal Psychonauts. I wanted, all I wanted. Yeah, I wanted to play a le heavy metal, like... Platformer. Platformer, That'd be cool. Legend of zelda E kind of game. Yeah, which it was until about halfway through the game. Yeah, and then it turned into a bad game. Yeah, you're like, oh, why did you RTS this? It's shitty. Uh, they started out, like, really well in making it, like, a 3D a a adventure platformer. Yeah. And then they stopped doing that, and then they made it an RTS that didn't feel finished. They did... Neither of them did well. <laughs> like... Right. It's like, why did you make this fucking game? <clears throat> and, like every Double Fine game, they ran out of money halfway through making it, and the ending is a mess. Yeah. Because that's Such just... A what Double Fine does. But whatever. An no. accountant can't be that expensive, right? I mean, to make a video game is. That's fair. No, I'm an accountant. Like, somebody to tell you that oh, you're yeah, spending too much to, goddamn money. Somebody to say, hey, don't spend all of your budget immediately. It says, oh, Tyler says it was originally only going to be an RTS. It's like, well, that would have been a worse game, so... If it was originally only going to be an RTS, the RTS stuff wasn't good enough to carry a whole game. Yeah. Which is, like, I guess that's why they must have added the platforming shit, but then... They should have known that, like, those things don't marry. Like, those things don't go together. Like, I think the problem was, and the budgeting problem, was they had to shell out a shitload of money for the soundtrack, because it's all licensed heavy metal music. Right. Which, to be fair, um, the uh, soundtrack of Brutal Legend is absolutely beyond reproach. It's perfect. Yeah, it's amazing. It's but, so like, good. Could they not have considered maybe if they did a couple less licensed songs and just had somebody write some heavy metal? Right. That they maybe could have made a decent game, and then maybe people would have actually listened to the goddamn soundtrack. I uh, I've gotten to the last fight in Brutal Legend. I played that much of it. Yeah, that's what we did. <clears throat> and I lost the last fight like twice, and then I said, "I'm not having fun playing this." I'm going to look up how the game ends on YouTube. That's also what I did with Undertale. I like I'm not having fun with this. I'm going I can't, to cheat. I'm pretty sure that I just can't play Undertale now. Like I just can't. It's, it's okay. Been, it's, it's been completely destroyed for me by the fan base. Like I just can't do it. I'm missing a red like, coin. There it is. There I knew it is. It was near the pipe. Um, like, everything that's interesting about that game has been shown to me, spoiled for me, all of it. Like, even, like, some of the parts that are, like, I guess I can't say that because I haven't played the whole game, but I played the first half an hour or so and I was like, wow, none of this is a surprise because everybody ruined this game for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, Tyler, I do too. Uh, Tyler basically owns the entire Double Flying Library. 
but none of the games have ever really hooked him. Yeah, same. I really thought that I was going to enjoy Stacking, which is the Metro Yoiska doll game that they did. Um, where, like, like if you need... it's a, It was a puzzle game, so, like, if you need to get through a security checkpoint, you make your little Metro Yoshka doll guy jump into, like, a police officer. That's kind of and, a cool idea. Yeah, or, like, if there's a, a crying woman, you turn into a handsome man and, and cheer her up by flirting with her. Like, it was, it was kind of like that, and it was kind of a neat concept... But it was, it was really, I don't know, kind of unsatisfying to play. Uh, yeah, it was cute and it was fine, I just didn't give a shit about it, like... Yeah, like, in Psychonauts, I would get excited when a new character showed up, or when the new setting was part of the new, like, the new world was a thing, like... You know, you show up in the Black Velvet world and I'm like, oh my god, this, this is amazing. Yeah, right. Or the, uh, the Milkman Conspiracy episode has some of the coolest level design I've ever seen in my life. And, like, it's one of those levels that's so good, it's cliche to say it's a good level. Like, Yeah, that's an amazing level. Like, ugh. I still can't get over the black, like, the velvet painting stuff, though. Like, it's so perfect. It's great. Like, it's beautiful. Like, when, it's, when I saw it, I was like, this is, this, they wrote this for me. <laughs> mm-hmm. They made this for me, thank you. Look at all the neon. Also, I did the perfect speed runniest Bowser fight right there, and we just talked was, right through it. It was pretty solid. I didn't miss a single bomb. <laughs> I um I actually watched I don't know, you might watch this guy. It's like a history, like a speedrunning history. And uh there was one on Mario sixty four. Look at Yoshi so I... the dinosaur. Where? He's on the roof. You missed him. Oh. Look, it's Princess Peach. She's hovering in the air. <laughs> Trying to 100% the French level nearly drove me insane. I don't like that level. Which was the French level? The tabletop game level. The Napoleon level. Oh, yeah. That was rough. I didn't really like that level. It was okay. I, th I thought it was a cool concept. And, like, but that level really just made me, like, want to get to the next world really fast. I haven't played Psychonauts in a very long time. I haven't. I should reinstall it and go through it. And it's all thanks to you. I like those crappy birds. Thank you, Mario. Smooch you on your weird old nose. Here we go. For Mario. I really love the music in this game too. Oh, yeah, Meat Circus sucks, too. That was another I level where they ran out of money while designing Meat Circus, so they had to hurry it and didn't test it very much. Yeah, I still really love the aesthetic of that level, though. Yeah, it looks really nice. Uh, that level, level particularly at the time, also resonated with me. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, before we end things, I do want to show what changes after you get 120 stars, just for fun. But we'll watch the credits here. Yeah, it's your friend! I hate that eel. Literally the penguin. He's flapping his little arms. Um, but yeah, next time I stream, we're going to play some Metal Gear Solid. Which will be fun. <coughs> um, I geek out when I play Metal Gear, like, big time, because I love it so much. Uh, and uh, Metal Gear Solid 1... Three and five are the best ones. Two and four are okay. But we'll, I'll probably never let's play two or four. Yeah, the penguin gets uh, really big and fat, so he's harder to race. I'll show that off in a second here. Oh, Mallory, guess what? You know that pin that you gave me that says Frig Off? Yeah. Um, it broke. I told you that. Like, the, uh, the pin came off of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I just now got into, like, started picking through my stuff that I packed, and I found the pin, and I'm going to fix it tonight, too. Nice. 
Because I'm a good bully who <laughs> fixes things like that his friends give him. I should make a um like an actual pin that just says frig off. I would buy the shit out of it, you know that. <laughs> I don't uh, know what I would put on it. Like uh, a pic would it be a picture or just like a little ribbon that says frig off? I, I feel like it should be as beautiful and elegant as possible. Like like just like gorgeous calligraphy. <laughs> Like flowers says, and shit. Right, like says some beautiful frig off. <laughs> We've been watching um, Canada's Worst Handyman recently. Yeah. What's that? And it's it's a reality show about people who really suck at like DIY and like home hardware shit. <laughs> um, it's actually, it's on Netflix. You should watch it. I think you'd get a kick out of it. I'll check it's, it out. It's um, but everybody is so gosh darn Canadian. Like, there's, a uh, in one of the seasons of Canada's Worst Handyman, there's a dude from, uh, Nova Scotia, and I'm just, like, watching him, and I'm like, you know Ricky. You know him. Right, right. <laughs> um, man, Danny came to visit me here in the States for a while, and I took the week off of work, and so for a week, all I did was talk to Danny, and he also brought Trailer Park Boys with him. And I see so Yoshi. So, for a whole week, all I did was talk to a Canadian and watch Trailer Park Boys. And when he left, for like a month, I had a Canadian accent. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much for playing my game. Look, there's Mario and Peach on the cake. There they are. And it, it, you know, not a big cake, I realized. I realized this as an adult. Yeah, it's I not thought a big it was cake. supposed to be a wedding cake or something that was massive. But when you look at it in comparison to the size of the teacup and the teapot, it's just kind of a normal size cake. Yeah, it's just two layers. Which is cool, but, like, not, not spectacular. I mean, I bet it's a great cake. I bet it tastes good. So let's run I in here. Eventually, have, um... like, two years from now, all of these are going to say 120 stars, and I'm going to have to start deleting games. Oh, no! There's, um... Let's see. I still have a problem saying car. Car, yeah. I don't know why I, like, and it's probably mm, three out of every five times I say car, I say it Canadian-y, and I don't know why. Yeah, I'll do it too occasionally. Look, it's Yoshi oh. the Dinosaur. Oh, there he is. There's also, um... This was a, uh, sorry to cut you off here, this was a Luigi okay. in Mario 64 thing. Is you talk to Yoshi the dinosaur, and he says, "Here you go. Here's all this shit. Thank you from the Super Mario Brothers team." And he gives you 99 lives. And then they said that once you have 120 stars, you go up and talk to Yoshi, and he gives you 99 lives. And then he jumps into the waterfall. And then you have to determine the trajectory he jumped at and jump into the same spot in the waterfall. You'll go through it. And then you'll get to do the last level where you get star 121 and unlock Luigi. It's all a lie. But that was one of the big Mario and... Or Luigi and Mario 64 rumors. When I was but a boy. I'm sorry, you can continue your story. <laughs> or you can just hang up on me. I think Mallory has hung up on me because I interrupted. Is that... Is that... Hello? There you are. Hello. I'm sorry. My knee unplugged the microphone. I thought you said your knee unplugged the microphone. I thought, what does no. that mean? My knee, the thing attached to my leg, it unplugged the microphone. Do you have neon legs? Maybe. How did that happen? Uh, tattoos and lots of money. Oh, that's... That's... That's the, uh, <laughs> that's actually the truth, is you have neon legs. I have mildly neon legs. You have some skin color leg and some neon leg. Yes. But there's a there's a show called Canada's Worst Driver that's by the same people as the handyman one. But <laughs> that one makes that one freaks me out more because like they could kill somebody. Yeah, and not just themselves. Uh, yeah. There, also, there's a new triple jump. Watch this. You just sparkle. Ah. Wait, hang on. And 
and now the penguin's real big and fat and takes up the whole racetrack, and it's harder He's to race. He's just, like, stretched. Yeah, they didn't make do a new model. They just, like, changed the X vertice on him a little bit. Yeah. Nothing really changed. Nice. And so he's just a little more difficult to race, but I'm gonna beat his ass here. It seems like he'd be easier to race, because he can't get around you either. No, no, he will just knock you off. Oh. He'll knock you off the slide and kill you. And you die fucking instantly. That's rude. Yeah, it's a shitty thing to do for a friendly penguin that just wants to race you. But yeah, that's it. That's Mario 64, y'all. Hooray! Um, it's, I, it's highly recommended by me, Samuel K. It's been my favorite video game since about 1996. It still is. I'm saying it's tied with Dark Souls for my favorite video game. But Get him. I've streamed both of them. Look, here's something we didn't show off. If you try to return this baby to the mama... That's not my baby. She looks nothing like me. Her and her parents, her parents must be worried sick. Well, hang on. Come here. Wait. Wait. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Hang on. Uh oh. This isn't working. What's supposed to happen? Hold on. I should have reset it. Okay. Oh no, he's still down there. Okay. We're gonna have to do this the hard way, Mallory. Uh oh. The tray in the chat says so long, gay Samuel. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, let's see. Poor gay Bowser. I really embarrassed him at the end of this game. <laughs> yeah, you did. Oh well. He's probably into it. Yeah, oh I was shit, is say that it. part of the thing is Bowser likes the humiliation of being beaten by Mario. Well, the, but then they both have to have some kind of humiliation. They really interest, both like right? that humiliation. So they. One and the other humiliates one and the other because they know how much both of them like it. Oh, that's so nice of yeah, them. Yeah, that's really sweet. Oh no. Don't kill him. So long, suckers. I'm Super Mario. That penguin, he done fucked up. I'm going to hell too. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>